to order the uh, July 6, 2020 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, this meeting is being held remotely. I'll turn my own camera on. Being held remotely in accordance with Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 38, Section 20. Uh, public comments will be accepted during the public comments period designated in the agenda. Please keep your uh, mutes on until you're called on. Uh, as usual, as we've progressed through these things, and I think it's worked well so far, uh, raise your hand and I will call on you in the order you pop up on my screen. Uh, because of the length of the agenda this evening, we are going to strictly be limiting comments to three minutes uh, as laid out in the ARB's bylaws. <clears throat> and uh, rules and regulations. Jenny will be timing that and let you know when your three minutes are up uh, because I expect a considerable amount of public comment on both uh, public hearings this evening. I want to make sure that everyone gets a chance not only to speak their piece, but uh, to make sure that they are listened to by all the attendees here. So with that, uh, we'll move right into business here. First up is docket 3602, 1207, 1211 Mass Ave. This is continued public hearing for the Hotel Lexington. Uh, I see both Mary Wayne Stanley O'Connor and Jim Doherty are here this evening. So Mary, I will turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, the board is in receipt of my June 24th, 2020 letter um, addressing a number of the points and the submissions. And what I will do is I am not going to repeat things that we have discussed in prior meetings, uh, but just expand upon some others that we have provided you information with. Uh, with respect to the board had asked for renderings, illustrations of how the project would look from east, the east, the west, and Clark Street. We provided you those. They were done by Bourne Illustration. I have given you uh, my uh, position with respect to uh, the step back issue um, uh, as a matter of uh, what Doug Heim has reported that the board, in fact, and the board knows, has the ability um, to uh, take into consideration uh, al alternating, uh, using an alternative method of determining whether a step back is necessary. Um, with respect to parking, uh, the petitioner is proposing 24 parking spaces on site. And as the board knows, there is no requirement for the first 3,000 square feet of non-residential use. The restaurant is 2,800 square feet. So we're talking um, at a maximum 50 spaces. Uh, for the hotel and the board has the ability to reduce that to 25% of what's required. Uh, Mr. Doherty is proposing 48% of the needed parking or 24 spaces and the ability to uh, stack park or tandem park eight additional vehicles. This is gonna be exclusively valet. There will be no self parking. And the board has approved uh, stack parking at the Homewood Suites when it approved the 20 additional rooms several years ago. The board also requested that he procure off-site parking for employees, and he has done that. I have submitted those letters. He has obtained 11 spaces, commitments for 11 spaces at several different locations. That does not include any spaces that he may uh, lease from the town at the Audison uh, Middle School parking lot. Parking on-site would be restricted to overnight hotel guests no self-parking and no tour bus parking. Uh, the next thing is the traffic impact report. We've provided you with an extensive traffic impact report and study. The data, the traffic counts were done on February 4th and February 5th, which is a Tuesday and a Wednesday of 2020. And the conclusions in the report indicate that the proposed project will have the minimum impact on the surrounding roadway network. Most, imp most impact during off-peak commuter hours, which would be check-in and check-out for the hotel. And the proposed restaurant use would have the highest impact weekday evening commuter hours, dinner time hours. Uh, the, it is expected that 52 vehicle trips would occur during the weekday morning peak hour and 57 during the weekday afternoon peak hour, which is a net increase of 18 trips during the morning peak hour and 23 during the weekday evening peak. So it's essentially one additional trip every three minutes during the peak hours. Um, the the uh, traffic engineer studied the area intersections and he has opined that they will operate at the same level of service. 
he also suggests that there's no additional mitigation or capacity enhancements necessary at the inter intersections. He has used a 2% annual growth rate for build conditions, whereas the master plan has um, included a much lower traffic volume increase over the years. The proposed project is not expected to have any significant impact on delays or queuing. Now, he does discuss the fatality, the bicycle accident that occurred at Appleton Street and Mass Ave. At the, and he has opined that the flashing signal equipment and solar glare likely played a significant portion of, of a significant impact in the, what happened there, that tragic situation. As you know, the board of select, the select board put together a committee to study that area to make short-term and long-term improvements as well as other areas on Mass Ave. The shadow study, um, as I've said in my letter, what uh, Mr. Seltzer has submitted and he calls an extended shadow study is not competent evidence. He is not qualified to provide uh, that type of report to the board. We have a shadow study that was provided by Lincoln Architects, which clearly reveals the shadow from the proposed hotel is minimal. What the shadow study does show is that the mature trees that are there are what's causing the shadow. The only impact would be, uh, it's with 18 Pierce Street. And 18 Pierce Street on the shadow study is two over from the right. And there are solar panels on the easterly side of 18 Pierce Street. The hotel shadow will not impact 18 Pierce Street, but it will uh, have an impact uh, at 3 p.m. during the winter solstice. So it's the westerly side of that property that would be impacted. The hotel has no impact on uh, 18 Pierce Street solar panels. Uh, and then um, with respect, and uh, Mr. Benson had asked that with respect to the uh, public access space that I provide a draft easement agreement uh, for the public access space, which I did provide, and I have also provided it to town council. I have not heard from him in response, but the number of times per week and the hours of usage would be up to this board, I would suggest to you. We had uh, recommended two, day, two times per week. We don't want this to be a nuisance to the neighborhood. You don't want this as something that's used every day. The plans have been revised to reflect a number of the changes that the board requested. So um, if I think it's probably better if you have specific questions that you'd like to address. And oh, and finally, the issue of contamination. To the extent that they may, they may be underground storage tanks there, that would be revealed um, before uh, in connection with the 21E that would be done and the remediation would be done in accordance with federal and state law. Thank you, Mary. <clears throat> uh, I'll turn it over to the board for questions and uh, begin with Jean. Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. Thank you for that little overview attorney um, O'Connor Wynn Stanley. Um, I have a few questions and then some comments. I wasn't clear when you were talking about the parking behind the building, whether restaurant patrons would ever be allowed to use that parking behind the building. They would not. At any time? No. Okay. It, would, it would be exclusively valet for overnight guests. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you had said overnight and I didn't know whether that was uh, meaning at other times of the day other people can use it, but it's only for people who will be staying overnight at the hotel. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, where will the tour bus let off passengers and where will it park after it drops off the passengers? It is going to have to park somewhere outside of Arlington, likely the um, in Lexington up along Route 128. And I believe that it will pull, Jim, I will defer to you. Where will the tour bus let off? Jim? Um, I apologize, just trying to unmute it, Mary. Uh, the tour bus will drop off under the carport at one of the um, uh, earlier meetings someone had uh, inquired as to the height and it was stated um, that it will be high enough and that is in fact the case. To your point, uh, the service center on 128 just past the junction of Route 2 and 128 
is um, is location where buses and other uh, vehicles such as that can um, can can park there overnight. There'd be no on-site parking for the tour buses. That's correct. And no morning parking either. No, they, for, the they would... for the tour buses. No. Okay. Um, can you talk about how you calculated the gross floor area? Because I couldn't find, I saw your final number, but it felt to me like a black box. So can you um, explain how the um, gross floor area was calculated? And it would be helpful to um, actually see those calculations if you haven't provided them already, because I couldn't find them. Jim, I understand that they they were provided previously um, in prior submissions. Is that correct? So, so what what we tried to do, uh, Gene, was address the issue that was raised la at the last meeting. Um, I believe when um, when when someone suggested that they uh, couldn't calculate to verify the square foot numbers that we previously had on there. And then I think the planning uh, department um, mentioned that they could not um, do it because the missing um, dimensions. So we included the dimensions this time around um, for someone to go forward. But we can certainly um, give, you know, augment that if you want in terms of um, we'll give both a grid with the exact floor areas and then someone's more than welcome um, to do the math if that's what they choose to do. Um, I, I, th I think it would be good if you could do both, if you could both give us the, the grid with the floor area for each story, plus how you did the calculation to come up with the number that you came up with. The calculation, I can tell you, the calculation is simply inclusive of the four floors above grade, Okay, well, that's what we—that's what I'd like to see. How we'll provide it in writing. Okay, no thank you. That would sure. be very helpful. Yep. Um, so, let me get to what um, you were talking about, um, Attorney Winstanley O'Connor, about the s step backs. I carefully reread. Um, Town Council Himes memo of May 13th after we received your letter of the other day and his memo doesn't mention step backs at all. It mentions that we have the authority to grant adjustments to required step backs under um, 5.3.16, but that provision is just for setbacks and not step backs. So if you can give me a citation to the bylaw that allows us to adjust the step backs, that would be very helpful because- I will, I will get that for you. Thank you. Um, so let me talk about the, the setback. Now we're talking about the setback on Clark Street. Um, the bylaw, I think, is pretty clear that because you're on a corner and your property abuts the R2 zone, that your setback on Clark Street um, is required to be whatever the um, front yard setback is required to be in the R2 zone, which is a 20 foot setback. Now I understand and agree that uh, the board does have the authority um, to adjust that for specific conditions unique to the hotel proposal, but you seem to say both in your letter, you seem to say both that the um, side yard setback did not apply, but also that the hotel um, had specific conditions unique to the proposal. And I wonder if you'd like to clarify, were you really saying both or are you really just saying it had unique conditions 
No, I was saying I'm arguing in, in the alternative. Well, can you explain to me the first part of the alternative? Why you're not subject to um, 5.3.8a, which says a corner lot shall have the minimum street yards with depths which shall be the same as the required front yard depths for the adjoining lots. I think because um, the mixed use bylaw provides that there is no um, side yard setback. That's what I would. And, and, and you don't think that 5.3.8a is intended to um, come into play for all of the later dimension setback side yard provisions and that's why it's there? I, I don't think it, I think that overrides. Ah, ah. Okay, well, I think we're gonna have to disagree about, about that part of it. Um, I, I should say that I'm not sure that the uh, redevelopment board is the right entity to um, have the easement. And I think that's something that I at least would have the board be discussing with uh, the town council to see who's the right, what is the right entity in town to get the easement for the public access space. Um, I'm sure you wouldn't have any objection to that. No, um, no, but I think, uh, Mr. Benson, that um, the ARB would be the board that would make the determination as to the duration and use of it. Well, I, I think not necessarily. I think maybe, okay. but maybe not. And similar to the naming, I sort of feel that um, the naming needs to be done by the select board. Um, if it's going to be an easement that the town has. So I'm go uh, that's one thing that I think I'd like the redevelopment board to discuss sometime this evening, assuming we go ahead and um, approve this. Um, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to ask you. Um, I think I have some other things, but they're more comments that I make rather than questions. So I'll save those for after all the questions are done. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Um, <clears throat> quickly, I'm just gonna interrupt uh, just to get a roll call of the members. So you can say here, uh, Gene Benson. Here. David Watson. Here. Kin Lau. Kin, you have to unmute. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Rachel Zimberry. Here. Thank you. Sorry about that all. Um, thank you, Jean. Uh, Jenny, I think you can answer some of the questions Jean has. Do you want to go ahead and do that? Yes, thank you, Andrew. This is Jenny Raitt. I'm the Director of Planning and Community Development. Um, and the first question is about the easement. Um, so if it was going to be a permanent easement, yes, the, the board could certainly speak to the duration of the easement, but ultimately the select board accepts an easement. And then we believe that it would actually go to town meeting. Um, so that, that would be, I've already spoken with council about this. Um, so that, that's one scenario. The other scenario is it's a, a special permit condition and uh, to grant the easement to the town, but it still would have to go through the select board and then town meeting ultimately. So um, the alternative would be that it's simply an agreement that we are able to use this as, as public space and there's some time limitation on how long it's actually available to the public which is sometimes the scenario in other, for other hotels that have you know, open space or other accommodations that are available to the general public. Um, so that's something. Uh, in terms of naming any sort of area with a plaque or some sort of memorial, um, that would be both the select board and then the memorials committee for the town. So it is not something that the ARB does at all. And again, we could um, support these things as conditions in the special permit but ultimately we are not the board to make those decisions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Move on to David. Hello, uh, I'm having a little bit of a technical problem, uh, which I'm trying to resolve. 
Uh, so I have my notes. Okay, I've got it. All right. Um, first, uh, I would like to uh, just say a little something about the step back issue. Uh, I uh, share Jean's concern about um, whether uh, the provision of the bylaw uh, and the town council's opinion regarding it um, actually uh, applies to the step back uh, on the upper stories uh, in addition to uh, setbacks uh, around the perimeter of the property. Um, but um, even, even if it does, um, I, I don't feel that you've made a particularly compelling case that we should exercise discretion if we have it. Um, you know, certainly um, the economic viability of a project is an important consideration, but I, I, I feel like that argument could be made for pretty much any project where an upper story setback is, is required, that it's reducing the economic viability of the project by reducing the available uh, gross floor area. So uh, I, I don't feel that that's necessarily a winning argument uh, in, in this situation. I wanted to focus primarily uh, on the traffic study and would like to say I do appreciate getting the, all the new data and, and there's a lot of it. Uh, so one thing I would like to suggest to the board is that we um, ask the Transportation Advisory Committee to take a look at all of this new traffic data and uh, let us know if they have any thoughts on uh, either the data or uh, the conclusions that have been drawn from the data. Um, with respect to uh, what is in the report, uh, I, uh, I did appreciate uh, that uh, the data was taken from a significantly broader area uh, than just the immediate vicinity of the hotel. It went, uh, goes as far east, I think, as uh, Pine Court um, and uh, includes Forest Street and the Appleton intersection. Uh, I did notice that that the data from the consultant did not include uh, data for the Lowell Street intersection, although there were several MassDOT crash reports that were included in the report that uh, did include uh, some uh, less detailed traffic count data for that intersection from it looked like the same time frame, which was February of, of this year. Um, I was wondering whether the consultant had uh, taken data for Lowell Street and it just neglected to include it or, or whether uh, the only data available is the mass dot data. I do not think he did traffic counts at Lowell Street. Okay. Um, I, I do think Lowell Street is is also a critical component of uh, the traffic patterns in in this area. Uh, you can see from the data that that is available uh, in the report that there there is significant traffic um, coming off of of Lowell Street at at various times a day. Um, so I'm. I'm not sure that we have enough data regarding that intersection, um, but I, I do appreciate that uh, the study area has been significantly increased uh, to include other intersections. Uh, I did want to point out that this was uh, this data was taken uh, by observation in February of this year, and I, I went back and looked at what the temperature was on the days that 
uh, the observations were made. And um, it was in the 20s on the mornings that the observations were made. So I have significant concerns about the uh, bicyclist and pedestrian numbers um, because their, their numbers would typically be reduced over the winter months and it was particularly cold on those mornings. So I'm not sure that these numbers really add much to the picture of, of what the bicycle and pedestrian traffic is like at, at those intersections. Another thing I noticed uh, is uh, I was looking at the uh, data on turning movements and I looked at uh, the Clark Street intersection in particular and I didn't quite understand uh, some of the data. And what I didn't understand was um, looking at the observed turning movements, and then they did no build and build projections on the turning movements. Um, the no build projections resulted in slight increases to both left and right turning movements over a five year period. But the, the build projections um, projected just a handful of additional turning movements um, to the left and no additional right hand turning movements over uh, the no build option. And, and I didn't understand how that could be possible because presumably uh, hotel guests would be leaving in the morning um, and some of them would be turning right. So I'm a little bit confused uh, about, about the the quality of, of those projections and uh, I, it's possible I'm misunderstanding them and uh, that's why I want the transportation advisory committee to take a look at this if if they if they can do that um, but I, I do have concerns about about the data and any conclusions that might be drawn from it. May I just. Um, I'm sorry. Dave. Oh, go ahead. I just want to respond in my correspondence to you. I also mentioned with respect to one of the reasons uh, to adjust the step back is that you are taking a, a property that's a B4 use now and converting it into uh, another use, which is highly recommended by the bylaw. In fact, there's provisions in the bylaw that says when you have the opportunity to change a B4 use, the uh, ZBA and the ARB should um, attempt to do that. So that is another reason. I appreciate that. I think that is, those are my main comments. Um, oh, one, one other thing I wanted to mention. I, I was having a really hard time understanding uh, the, the driveway uh, slopes um, at the back of the hotel and what that would mean um, for entering vehicles entering and exiting um, that rear parking lot. Uh, and uh, I, there is an image in the presentation of, uh, I think maybe it's a, a garbage truck um, and how it would back into the, the property. And it, uh, it looked a little bit scary because it looked like the front of the garbage truck was at an angle where it was almost on the property across the street uh, from, from the, uh, the driveway entrance. So um, I, I don't know whether there was something, uh, another sheet in here that showed the slopes of, of the whole back more, uh, more clearly or, or, uh, or if it's just not in here. I'd have to defer to Jim on that. The real rear parking area is not a, it's not a hole. It's, um, has a very modest, um, extremely modest slope into that area. 
And the shadow uh, highlighted area on that study is simply uh, a demonstration of the entire um, street layout um, of the street where a truck could go down. The reason there was a decision made uh, by the engineer to utilize a, a, um, a, a rubbish removal vehicle was because that demonstrated that that would be the largest vehicle that would enter that site, i.e. all delivery vehicles would not be um, that large or larger than that. I see. And does it show the, the slope right uh, at, at the driveway entrance and, uh, and into the parking area? It does, Gene. You can see, um, if you look along um, the slide that um, someone nicely just put up, um, the distance, you will see where the arrows are going in the back corner just before the buffer space. I see that. It's sighted 93. Yes. Okay, and then you can see the arrow showing down. I believe it's showing a 5% pitch there. Um, I think that distance is somewhere approximately, we'll say about 20 feet, where it gets down to where it's uh, 9-2, which is between the two arrows, just in front of where the um, uh, water retention system would be under the driveway. Okay. So you can so see what it's, very, it's an extremely modest um, slope. So what's the 13.25% that's below the 93? Um, I don't know. I would have to ask the engineer um, exactly. I'm not an engineer. Um, but um, I think you can see where the numbers are laid out, um, where the center, where the middle of that is, is probably the, um, you know, the best depiction. Um, and it's uh, 94. 93 and 92 and that's right in the center. So I don't know if the pot right there that that wall is six feet high um, above that driveway area mm -hmm. and uh, again, it's to create um, a buffer area there as well uh, in more green space for the uh, for the neighbors. Okay. I mean, it, it, we can certainly it, follow up with that for you. Yeah, I, I'd love to see maybe maybe an elevation that better displays exactly what the slope looks like. Uh, and my my primary concern is uh, is uh, visibility of pedestrians and uh, oncoming traffic on Clark Street when vehicles are exiting um, the driveway. No slope like there. There will we we certainly will um will get like kind of a cut through elevation of that angle there for you, but uh, uh, it, nothing would rise remotely close to a uh, situation. It's not um, a situation similar to where the town just went through and had to deal with all of the um, parking garages under the two family duplex condos being built and things like that. This would this is it, it, the comparison is not even remotely close. I I uh, would just like to to see uh, see that a little bit more clearly. Yeah, and I and I think again, um, whoever if this is Jenny, whoever is doing a good job pulling the bottom of the plan up, you can see the driveway detail there as well. But we can uh, we can certainly uh, um, we can certainly speak to the engineer about that, and I'm sure Mary um, can address it. Yeah, because it does show on on the right side of that slide it does uh, i am seeing it it is showing uh a five to fifteen percent slope uh and uh, that's a little bit unclear to me that it's got a variable slope and and what that actually looks like and fifteen percent would be pushing right up against the limits of of uh of what we uh would allow in in the example that you gave with uh, the uh, houses with the garage under. Correct, but I don't I don't do we'll, I, uh, Mary again. I'll defer to you on it, but I think that's certainly something we can follow up with those other items. Yes, we will. I I think those were my main items for for now. Okay. 
Thank you, David. <clears throat> Thanks, Mary and Jim. Um, Jenny, my understanding is that TAC is meeting pretty infrequently. Uh, could we have an analysis? How quickly could we have an analysis done, uh, maybe by your transportation planner and some staff members, if possible? I think that could be done by the next meeting, which is the 20th, I believe. Um, is your next, mm -hmm. the, the board's next meeting on, yeah. Monday, July 20th. And that potentially some members of TAC may, able, may be able to participate in that, we can see. Okay. I think that'd be helpful to understand some of the, uh, the questions David has. And I, I think we could, um, that was something I was gonna request as well. So thank you, David. Uh, Rachel, I'm going to go to you for, for questions unless David has anything else. Okay, go ahead, Rachel. Great, thank you. Um, I, I concur with the questions that were asked previously by, by David and, and Jean. Um, David, one thought I had with regard to the question you had about the traffic study and the increased left turns out of Clark but not right um, is that if this truly is a valet only situation that you'd be bringing the car back to the entry but not necessarily turning turning right um, so that's that's just one one thought i i had there but obviously it would be great to have that clarified that that's a good point but even if that's the case the the numbers don't seem to add up because it's a very small change sure sure absolutely um, so, you know, as we're talking about that, that um, driveway entrance there onto, uh, from, uh, from Clark, um, I, I share some of the same concerns about the, the, the truck diagram and its ability to truly make that, make that turn to, to back into the driveway as it's illustrated. So I, I think that's something we want to have studied further to make sure that that is in fact um, able to be navigated without going up onto the the sidewalk there um, and i believe that we had spoken at one point about signing that so that there there was no right turn onto clark to address some of the neighbors concerns about the um, increased traffic into the neighborhood out of the, the parking lot. Um, so I think that's something I'd, I'd like to, to see or at least have addressed. Um, in addition to the gross floor area calculation that Jean requested, one of the other items that I didn't see, and again, there was a lot of information in this packet, so um, if, if, I, if it was included, I, I'd appreciate it if you could point me in the right direction, is, the calculation for the open space requirement, um, which is something that I, I would want to take a look at and make sure that we have thoroughly addressed. That was something that we had requested in the last. We will get that to you. Okay, great. Um, and then I had a couple of things from a design perspective, um, which I can certainly send in more detail following the meeting, I, I appreciate the, um, the attention that, that you play, paid to addressing the, the last round of, of design comments. I think that, the, um, that the, the massing of the projections on the front facade of the building are feeling more um, in, in scale. Um, I do have some questions about the, the railing itself that's proposed at the, the, the balcony level at the fourth floor. Um, and I, I do have some concerns about the flatness of the, the five. I, and again, without the materials, it's a little hard to, to um, react to this. I, I think in your note, you mentioned that you are still waiting on samples to be able to um, to share a full sample package with us, um, but the, the flatness of what I assume are fiber cement panels on the front facade compared to um, what I would prefer to see, which is what you've actually used on the back of the building, which is the, the clapboard, which allows you to really articulate the sills and the, the aprons below the windows um, that would be more in keeping with the, the style of the, the rest of the um, design that 
that you've shown us um, in this last view, but I can certainly send those through to Jenny to, to send to you um, some of those more minute details there. Thank you. Andrew. Thanks, Rachel. Um, Ken, did you have any questions? Or Jenny, Andrew. go ahead first. Oh, just Sorry. real quickly. Uh, actually, Jim was able to drop off the sample package to Town Hall, and I picked it up, and I now have it. <laughs> um, but I can also provide it to any board member uh, by delivery, perhaps. So, Rachel, I could bring it over at some point, or we can figure out some other arrangement. But sure. I do have the samples. Also, I think it would be helpful if you list out the the specs of the samples so that just anybody can review them. That's not been provided. And I don't have that listing. Um, all that was provided to me was the physical sample in a bag. Um, so I, I can drop them off, but I think that um, the applicant needs to also provide just sort of the specs of each one of the samples that were provided. I think, Jim, I think you did that, didn't you? Um, yes, yes, so, uh, on, uh, as part of the attachment, it, it has the link to the websites um, for each manufacturer and each particular um, um, product. But we can, we can certainly augment it, it's not a problem. I don't know if that was in the bag, so you might need to provide that again. No, I think, I think that was with the package, Jenny, but we can certainly Oh, get in the package, got no. it, okay. no understood. We'll, we'll, we'll forward it, it's easy enough, it's a little Excel. Thank you. You're welcome. If, if I could just make a, you know, additional request to that too. I, I didn't see where those were then keyed to the elevations. So if that's something too that you could provide, um, you know, together as a, as a total package, that, that would be very helpful. That's all I have, Andrew, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Ken, go ahead. Uh, hi. Um, uh, Jim, thank you for the resubmittal. It, it looks uh, like we're getting there. Um, I still have a few more. I still have a few other comments. At the last meeting, we had asked for um, elevations rounding neighborhood and uh, better understand the scale of how this building sits within a neighborhood. Um, you know, so if we can get an idea of some elevations of the buildings adjacent uh, to this hotel and across the street from the hotel, uh, that's across Clock Street. And then while you have uh, the section started of the, uh, of the building, I would do it going across Mass Ave and seeing what's across the street from Mass Ave and showing the height of that building and elevation of that building because that's up a hill. And so you understand what the scale, how this fits in there. Um, these renderings look nice and they, you know, it's really subjective to um, um, the architect who, who puts them in there, how it, how it feels, but the elevations will just truly tell how, that, how that's gonna really truly work. Um, if you look at, uh, Jenny, if you go to those um, uh, photographs with the, with the model put into it, you see your building put in there relative to all the rest of the buildings. It's, it's kind of hard to tell scale wise. So if we actually had an elevation of it, you, you can actually see much better how this thing fits or doesn't fit in the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, I thought we had asked for that last at the last meeting. Um, I'm just going to ask for it again. Um, I'm not going to touch base on what some of my other uh, board members said. I think I agree with them. Um, I'm going to maybe um, hop on to what Rachel said a little bit about the uh, elevations. Uh, you showed elevations of uh, what was before and what is current. Um, uh, I think uh, it look, it's, a, it's a better improvement. The only thing is that you chose a darker um, color siding there with, uh, with an expressed grid. So the white grid ex is expressed a lot more then I guess the other ones is, it used to be like a metal reveal or something within a white grid, a white board. I think, uh, you know, my opinion, I would, I like the white uh, color better than this darker color that you have chosen on front elevation. And I would, um, 
encourage you to maybe we look at that. I don't know what the other boomers might say, but I just think having a dark uh, massing up there is, is not helpful. Uh, I think it's better to have uh, that light massing and not to express the grid as much. Um, and uh, I think Rachel's comments about using laps, uh, you know, the siding there may bring the scale down a little more above is a good one. Um, and looking at that uh, way ramp in the back, I, I, if, if um, I, I think what your engineer is trying to do is keep a, a consistent opening below the building. So that's why it pins that uh, elevation at one point and makes it almost like a 13% slope. If you were to just lift that up a little bit more and say, say the opening that goes into that uh, building there at that maybe one or two parking spots has lower headroom, you would, you would, uh, you would alleviate the steepness of the slope. Uh, and I would just have your engineer look at that and carry that 5% you know, five to eight percent all the way across the ramp. Because right now, the right side of the ramp is almost at thirteen percent slope, whereas the left side of it is only five percent. If you can blend that better and just extend the length of that ramp because it curves, and just bring the elevation up a little higher, I think you would alleviate a lot of that sloping. Um, I also we also had talked about the front courtyard space. Um, we 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 were gonna, we talked about a lot of potentials of it being some sort of public space and and I thought we were gonna look at um, having some blow up plans of that uh, with the entry to the restaurant and maybe the entry to uh, the public um, gathering space we're, we're proposing just so we have a better idea what you what you're trying to offer there. It's right now only seen in a, in a, in a uh, sketch up model and um, a site plan. If we had a blown up version of that saying, here's what potential activities could happen, uh, I, I would, it'd be encouraging. Um, that's what I have for now, Andrew. That's great. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, I think those are, those are reasonable requests. Um, <clears throat> most of my concerns have, have been answered. Uh, traffic, question of the easement, uh, driveway slopes, uh, open space. I think the one thing that I would like to see, and Jenny, this is more of a question for you than for the applicant. Um, would it be possible to get your department to provide a shadow study, given that we have uh, a couple of conflicting reports here? Um, certainly agree with Attorney O'Connor's statement, uh, but just for our own edification purposes, uh, and <clears throat> being sure that those homes on Pierce Street aren't impacted by the shadow. Is that something we could get done? Uh, probably, yes. I, I just would have to check on the timing and the availability of that uh, staff person to do this in time for the meeting on the 20th. Okay. But Thanks. yes, I think so. I, I, would, I would support that. I was going to mention that later. I think it's, it's critical to get an independent look at uh, what the shadows would be from the building. Okay. That was all, uh, all I had. I, I echo the concerns of my colleagues. I think we're on the right track here. Uh, I think we're getting there. <clears throat> I think the set of elevations and a few things that we've asked for uh, may put to bed all of the, the major concerns and questions that we have about the, the technical side of the project. Uh, Jenny, did you have anything before I open up public comment here? No, I think everything has been covered at this juncture. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, normal rules of public comment. Uh, I realize we're all uh, dealing with individual issues and, and getting used to technology still. Uh, but I would ask that everybody please be respectful. Uh, as I indicated at the beginning of the meeting, uh, I'm going, I've asked Jenny to keep time on public comments. Uh, you will each be given three minutes in which to speak consistent with the rules and regulations and bylaws of the ARB that we voted on. Uh, <clears throat> make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak. Please raise your hand. Uh, you'll note that I've left everyone's camera on this evening who wishes to have that left on. If it's turned off, it's at your own, uh, your own choice and option. 
So uh, raise your hand and we will go through the process and go through the list as uh, necessary. There are a lot of people on uh, and I will get to all of you. So go ahead with the, the hand raising, please. Uh, I see Adam Darlow first. Hi, go ahead, Adam. Hi, yeah, um, my name is uh, Adam Darlow. I uh, live in 6 Clark Street, which is right across Clark Street from the proposed hotel and especially uh, right across from the uh, parking uh, entrance and exit. Um, and that parking situation is certainly the thing that concerns me uh, the most. Uh, I'm I uh, echo the concerns uh, that several board members have uh, already mentioned. Um, uh, first of all, around the slope and um, whether that can make it uh, more difficult, especially for trucks uh, going in and out of, uh, of that driveway and how that impacts uh, how they turn out uh, into Clark Street. Um, I'm also uh, just very concerned about visibility, given that um, on one side, the building goes up to, if I understood the diagrams correctly, five and a half feet from the, uh, from the uh, edge of the sidewalk. And on the other side, there is parking plus the privacy fence, plus the trees all the way up to the sidewalk. Um, that doesn't leave great visibility for uh, any cars or trucks exiting uh, that driveway. Um, and finally, I'm uh, concerned about the turning radius. Uh, so um, uh, delivery trucks require uh, have an outer turn radius of 29 feet, uh, which according to what we've measured is one foot less than the entire width of Clark Street. Um, so that basically puts them right on our front lawn when they're um, uh, when they're turning out of the uh, um, out of the driveway and I'm not sure exactly how the backing in would work. Um, so I'm really concerned about that. Um, I also wonder how realistic it is that, in fact, there will not be any right turns onto Clark Street. Um, even if that is the guidance, that the alternative is turning left onto Mass Ave and then what, doing what is essentially a U-turn on Mass Ave in order to enter the uh, valet parking cutoff. So. That means wrestling with Mass Ave traffic twice in a row, like two left turns. Um, I worry that that's not going to be practical and that in, in practice, uh, the valet drivers will have no choice but to actually take those right turns that they're not supposed to and go through Pierce and Forest, um, uh, adding to the traffic that we've been uh, concerned about. Okay, um, that's, that's three minutes, but okay. thank you. We, yep. we, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, things to keep in mind. And uh, Don Seltzer, I see your hand up next. Go ahead. Thank you, Don Seltzer, Irving Street. I'm going to jump right in and answer Mr. Watson's question about soap on the driveway. Um, if I could have my first slide up. Jenny? So, uh, Clark Street and the sidewalk um, in that area sloped down at an 8% grade to begin with. That's a cr uh, crosswise across the mouth of the driveway in the rear. Um, and then the entrance ramp into the parking area, uh, the slope varies considerably. Uh, on the far end, uh, is it possible to get my figure up? Hello? Andrew, is that uh, possible? You didn't submit them on time, but I'll allow it 
due to the holiday weekend. Uh, our rules ask that you submit anything by Friday afternoon. But go ahead, Jenny. Don, please submit them on time the next time. Okay, it's rather difficult. So then we only got the material posted publicly Wednesday evening. I remind you, um, your time is running. Okay, uh, so you can see there that the slope varies considerably. It's pretty easy to calculate it. Just uh, Mr. Darney referred to, for instance, in the middle, um, it goes from 94 feet down to 92 feet elevation, about 20 feet. You could do that in your head. That's a 10 percent grade. Um, can we go to the next slide? Okay, the real problems with this parking area. Um, B2 zones require a buffer in the rear of a fence and five foot buffer strip. However, two thirds of the parking lot is B4 and that requires a seven and a half foot buffer strip. At the entrance of the driveway, the bylaws require that the privacy fence not be there and instead you have to have a 15 foot buffer strip sticking out. So the entrance to your driveway is really only uh, 10 feet wide. Um, the Parking space is there. The first one there is designated as handicapped. Handicapped on a ramp is not a particularly great idea. Um, the garage openings appear to be eight feet or lower. There's no way any delivery truck is gonna be able to back into them to, and use to turn around. So any truck that comes down there head first, um, that's more than 20 feet, is not going to be able to turn around and is going to have to back out onto Clark Street. Um, I'd like to address the remarks that Attorney O'Connor made about me disparaging my shadow information and well, telling that's, the board. That's three minutes, Don. That's three minutes, Don. Thank you. We'll, we'll I had to wait several minutes for you to put up my slides. Don't I get any additional time? And don't I get, get time to during the, to the open forum at the end? And we're not going to get into a, a shouting match between you and Attorney O'Connor about your qualifications. Thank you. I do appreciate the work. We'll take a look at it. Certainly something we're considering. Uh, ben Rudick. Oh, that came up a bit faster. Hey, uh, Ben Rudick, 40 Web Cabot Road. Hopefully this baby doesn't start screaming. Um, just generally like to say that I'm very excited to see the possibility of something new being built that will help uh, bolster our commercial base. Um, Although I know hotels are going to be a challenging business for the foreseeable future with COVID, but you know, maybe if this is successfully built and we're able to resolve um, the various objections, um, we'll have a new and uh, productive asset that'll uh, contribute to our tax base. That's all I got. Build a hotel. All right. Thank you, Ben. Okay, uh, Anne LaRoyer, I think you're raising your hand and not using the, the hand raise feature, so go ahead. Oh, sorry, yes, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. I sent in some comments earlier that went in before we received all the information from Attorney O'Connor and others, um, and some of those things have been addressed. I just want to accentuate a couple of things. Um, the parking study, parking and traffic study, um, it's already been mentioned that TAC and perhaps the bicycle committee um, and others, there's another uh, committee that the select boards um, started to look at this whole corridor, which is um, certainly very problematic. Now there's additional activity, the liquor store, the development at Myrac is gonna be in this same area, possibly other development in the area. So it's really becoming a, a hot neighborhood and we're, you know, obviously all of us that live here are concerned about this. Um, so I hope that you will definitely get TAC and others involved in, um, in looking at this traffic study. And um, one of the things that I noticed, or I did not notice in this um, report they did so far, there's no mention of children. I didn't see any kind of reference to the Audison School or the children's room or the activities of the Greek church, which are all directly you know, in this neighborhood. And, um, Audison School is not in session right now, of course, and I know the study was done in February, but it's winter, um, you know, there's huge amounts of traffic that go around Pierce and Clark Streets um, during the children, during the um, delivery times for children at the Audison. It's huge traffic, and that's somewhat reflected in the studies that they did that I could try to figure out you know, some of the turns and all that that um, Mr. Watson referred to, but I, I really don't think that's been adequately addressed. And I think that the 
the pedestrian needs as well as the bicycle needs of this neighborhood really need to be looked at much more closely. Um, I had a question about handicap parking. Um, there's one site um, allocated. Is that sufficient for the town's requirements for handicapped? I don't know. I'm just asking about that. And also, what about the people that come to the restaurant? Where are they? Where is a handicapped person going to park there? Um, and also, I want to know about um, parking in front of the hotel. I know there's the two entrance, you know, the, the arch um, entryway, but there's none of the plans show if, if there's any designated parking on Mass Ave in the areas between the um, entranceways, because that's, um, that really is a, a, a visual impediment for people coming out of Clark, Clark Street, uh, especially looking east. It, the cars that park there really block the visibility uh, looking east. Um, the other thing I Thank really you. like is trees. Um, I really, they keep showing trees in the back of the building there in their shadow studies and in other studies, but um, I, I want to know whether those trees that are there now are really going to be there when this thing is built. Um, okay. Thank I, you, Ann, uh, and thank you for the comments that you submitted. Uh, they've been included with tonight's package. So um, some of those points that you mentioned, I will uh, add to our request to TAC to take a look at, particularly the issue of uh, the Audison School. I think that's Thank something you. that's worth considering, concerned about. Uh, Carl Wagner, go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay, great. Thank you. My name is Carl Wagner. I'm at 30 Edge Hill Road in Arlington. Um, I wanted to thank the board for the review of these large amount of documents that were just recently received last week. And it's clear that the board has taken uh, a lot of time and put a lot of energy into looking at what I would consider are still serious insufficiencies in the project. And I hope that the applicants will continue to work with the board to uh, fix issues that clearly go around or, or go around the law, such as the setback, the, um, the issues with the frontage on Clark Street, the size of the building, the parking, uh, the shading of, of residential areas nearby. And in general, I'd like to see the applicants work better with the neighborhood. Uh, Mr. Seltzer's background image is what the property used to look like, I believe. It was a disaster. The, uh, the applicants really owe the people in the neighborhood a lot to, uh, to come up to where they should be with it. And I'd like to say that I think it still really should bother people that even though the town assessor is allowed to represent the applicants on this board, something doesn't look right when your town assessor is representing a client in front of a town board. So Ms. O'Connor is, is legally allowed to do this, but it just isn't right, and I hope the town will change that rule. Finally, I'd like to criticize Mr. Bunnell for shutting down Don Seltzer's work. He's done a lot of really high quality work to find problems that the board has benefited from and the citizens on this call today have benefited from. So I hope you will let Mr. Seltzer continue to show what he's provided. And if not, I encourage everyone to take a look at the website, arfrr.org, Arlington Residence for Responsible Redevelopment, where he's presented already seven different uh, installments in the blog of, of things that can, can do better and ways that this hotel can go in and help our tax base. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Wagner. Uh, Chris Loretti. Remind everyone to stay in scope, please. Uh, Mr. Loretti? Am I unmuted, Mr. Chairman? You are. Thank you. I'm going to um, proceed um, mainly through the comments in the letter that the applicant's attorney submitted. And the first one I'd like to address is whether a hotel is residential use. And in, indeed it is, Sorry, the uh, applicant's can I attorney just interrupt goes you to, for your name and yeah? address. Can I just interrupt you for Chris your name Loretti, and address? Chris Loretti, 56 Adams, 56 Adams Street. Thank you. And, Thank you. and the applicant's attorney correctly points out that uh, residential use is not defined in the bylaw. The bylaw says if it's not defined in the bylaw, you go to the state building code. And the state building code incorporates the International Building Code 2015, 
And in residential group R1, section 310.3, you find hotels and motels as residential uses. So therefore, it is a residential use. The applicant also says that mixed uses are allowed in B2 and B4, and that's correct, but she doesn't address the elephant in the room, and that is that hotels are not allowed in B2. And as I um, expressed in my email to you today, the town council is really not the right person to address that since he represents the seller, which is the Board of Selectmen, and, and the property doesn't sell unless the permit's granted. So you really need to get outside counsel on that. As far as the floor area bonus goes, because it's a residential use, it doesn't apply at all. And it doesn't apply in the B2 district in any case. And even if it did, the way the applicant is calculating it is completely wrong. They have to subtract off the amount of the amount, they have to subtract off the amount of land in the easement before they make that calculation. And they have to also have to subtract that land area from the landscaped open space. Now there is a landscape plan in the documentation, but it's really unclear just what they're counting as landscaped. And hardscaped areas like paved patios do not count as landscaped area. They clearly don't meet the requirements of the bylaw. Um, I think you've addressed the yard setback issue on Clark Street. I would say that the retaining wall is the operative structure that has to be set back. The, the bylaw requires that that is a structure that must meet the setback requirements. And right now it appears to be zero for that. Um, you, the board correctly noted that the step back um, in section 5.317 gives you no authority to reduce it. And um, I would also like to come back to this question of the calculation of the floor area or the presentation of it. I looked at the first floor, for example, and it gives the floor area for the restaurant use and the hotel use, and the total is 5,042 square feet. When I do a calculation, I come up with 5,500 square feet based on simply the length and width of the building. And so it's really not up to the board or your staff to do that calculation. It's up to the applicant to do it and submit it to you and document it and then for you to review it. So I, I don't know uh, if you were strong, around at the beginning right, earlier in the yeah. meeting, Chris, but we did ask, uh, we did request that information from the applicant. Well, the, and I heard the applicant say he would give it to you so you could calculate it. He, they need to calculate it. Now, I do have one final question for um, on the easement itself, because if I'm reading it correctly, it looks to me like it's a part-time easement and that the public will only have access on two occasions per week. Is that correct? I'm going to cut off your time there, but I'm going to allow Attorney O'Connor to respond. Thank you, Mr. Loretti. That, that was the recommendation. Uh, that's just a negotiating document. Okay, that's outrageous, but thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Tara Bradley. Hi, um, I'm Tara Bradley. I live at 28 Clark Street. Um, and so I would like to just emphasize for the board um, that the gentleman stating his enthusiasm for building the hotel, if I heard correctly, living on Cabot Road, uh, lives in East Arlington. So I just want to note that. Um, second, um, I would like to know what the backup staffing plan is for the valet position um, or any contingency plan for parking um, should the valet call out sick. I am concerned that um, with such a small hotel, um, there's not going to be a lot of extra staff around. And if someone were to call out that the valet plan um, might be um, might be damaged just because, you know, they kind of run out of folks to take over that role if someone were to call out sick. Uh, Mary, would you like to respond to that or Jim? I would have to defer to Jim on that. Um, this, this is a hotel operation and um, pretty much uh, every team member um, is a critical function and um, it's run by professionals. We don't anticipate uh, that being any more of a problem than, um, than not having a concierge or uh, or a uh, front desk clerk. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Barbara Thornton. Barbara, I just unmuted you. Yeah. yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Let me get my... Oh. Sorry. Okay, now I'm here. 
Thank you very much. I just want to say I am I am pretty excited about seeing this uh, application come in, and I know it's there's a lot of things to be considered and a lot of things for the community to review for the community to review, and for the uh, board to review. But from my perspective, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 223 Park Avenue, Arlington. From my Thank perspective, you. living in Arlington Heights, I've I've watched the heights kind of go down. And I'm very excited that this could help us turn the corner and and see the heights go up again to being a, a more vibrant uh, neighborhood in the Arlington community and also contribute to the tax base of the town as a whole for the commercial property side. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I have uh, Aram Hallman next. Uh, please state your name and address uh, as I call on you. I need to remind people of that. So go ahead, Aram. Name and address. Uh, test. Can you hear me clearly? I can. Aram Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. Uh, I am opposed to this. I'll try to avoid detail on points uh, which have already been made. Uh, I am concerned about the conflict of interest whereby the developer used to live in the house that was owned by the now assessor who was also a trustee of that house. That's uh, wild. Just, that's not, can we please stick to the scope? Let's stick uh, to the scope of, of this project. Thank you. I will stick to the scope, but I believe that is part of the scope. Uh, the interests of people have to be respected and acknowledged. Uh, this is, to sum it up, too small a space, too tall a building, the wrong zoning and inappropriate use, and it is insufficient parking. I stand opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have Andrea Dwyer next. Andrea, you're on mute, so I'm just. Yep, thanks, Go I ahead. just muted myself, sorry about that. Um, hi everyone, this is Andrea Dwyer. I am at 26 Pierce Street, which is the property directly behind the proposed hotel property. Um, I just want to echo my neighbor's concerns about a variety of topics that have been covered. Um, the two, a couple things that are of highest interest to me is I would like to um, reinforce it's a discussion I heard amongst the board earlier that I'd really like to see some further um, discussion of, or, or uh, another view of the, sh the shadow study, some outside perspective. Um, if I understood the comments early in the call, um, it sounded as though there was a, a kind of a statement that, that properties would not be affected by shadows. And I, I find that quite doubtful given the, si the proposed size of the property and um, how much the, the character of my property I expect to change with a, a large building right behind. Um, and the other thing I'd like to echo that I heard discussed amongst the board is um, the desire for additional, uh, a lot more additional um, elevations and um, views to see the scope of the building amongst the existing structures. Um, if I notice correctly in the um, materials, there was kind of one image taken from Clark Street with a little rendering of the hotel in the corner, it really was not sufficient to give um, give the board a, a real sense of, I think, how it would look in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lisa Hines, go ahead. Thank you. Lisa Hines, 14 Sunset Road. Um, I agree most almost completely with my neighbor from Pierce Street who just spoke in uh, supporting the board's request for uh, opinion from the traffic committee, um, additional elevations to further describe um, the, the site, the project within the site. Um, but I also agree with uh, my neighbors who are in support of the, um, the economic uh, engine of the hotel in, in the town. If at all possible, I would love to see the public easement extend uh, either in perpetuity or um, at, at greater length than is presently stipulated, both temporarily uh, in terms of days of week uh, and or duration. Um, but th that's, that's everything I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marina Darlow, name and address, please, and go ahead. 
Hi, my name is Marina Darlow. I'm at Six Clark, right across from the street from the proposed hotel. Uh, so first of all, I echo most of the sentiment in here. I am happy that Arlington is getting a commercial vehicle for um, enhancing our tax base. That's great. However, uh, as somebody who is going to be one of the most impacted residents, um, parking is one big concern and to be more specific to add on what had been said before 27 parking spots for 50 rooms sound really insufficient to me which means we're going to get a lot of congestions a congestion on the adjacent streets uh, and in addition this traffic study is based on typical commute um, i would like to point out specifically that Typically, in my view, people bike and use public transport on their way to work far more than on their way to and from hotel in the Heights. We're not talking Kendall Square, where everybody bikes or uses public transport. We're talking somewhere where there are barely two buses and it's not really accessible by anything else. Um, so, and you know, if you come to Arlington from somewhere else, you're not likely to take a bike with you. So in practice, I believe there will be far more cars. One more concern that I want to address, um, given the vehicle with flat tires that's been here since we moved in last year, um, right, in, you know, right on the lot, and the huge um, garbage container that's there, um, I'm, I would like to see a more detailed protocol about the construction process, basically, uh, I would really be interested to see the developers show us how they make it tolerable for those who live nearby. What are the noise levels that are acceptable? What hours people would be working? Where the construction workers would park? Or if they come via some kind of um, bus or public transport, I don't know, how would that look? Uh, because frankly, right now I'm concerned that the well-being of the neighbors is not a top priority for the developers. And we have an evidence right across the street. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have someone whose screen name is Rocky. Go ahead and state your name and address, please, so that we know who you are. Jim Rossi lives on Pierce Street. Uh, they are still muted. Go ahead. Is, uh, if you're unmuted. Can Go you ahead. Me name and address. Yeah, okay. uh, name and address, please. Uh, James Rossi at uh, 3234 Pierce Street. Uh, I'm going to butter directly across the street. Um, I just wanted to share my appreciation for everything the board has done uh, to help sort of standardize this and make it palatable. Uh, just for example, moving the, the garbage. Uh, away from my driveway uh, further down as far as possible like that's that stuff is very nice and it's, it's appreciated uh, especially not studying and knowing all of these bylaws um, that said uh, when this project initially got started uh, we were promised a boutique hotel uh, something that compares to the inn at Hastings at uh, in Lexington which is a beautiful Victorian hotel um, it's modest uh, fits right into the to the to the layout of the of the area, um, and to me, uh, it sounds like they're 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 trying to maximize everything um, with this space, which is fine. Uh, this is all business, um, but uh, I just want to know if there's going to be anything, any uh, anything to uphold all these promises we're being kept up front to tell us that you know buses are going to park over at 95 when everybody knows it's easier if they just park on Clark Street. Uh, or there's not going to be any right-hand turns. I mean, it's a perfect thing to say up front, but what is going to uh, enforce these after this gets uh, approved? So we have, uh, if this is approved, there will be a special permit with a number of conditions, the general and specific, that hold the permit in place. If those are violated, the zoning enforcement officer, who is not a member of this board, this board is not the zoning enforcement officer, can come in and uh, enforce the permit through fines. Uh, if the board does find that it's not being taken care of, it can uh, call the applicant back in front of us and discuss 
revoking the special permit or taking other actions uh, as necessary. It's, it's very important to the business interests of the applicant that he adhere to all the requirements of the special permit that's issued. Thank you. Very similar to losing your license, so to speak. Are there other folks? That, thank you. Uh, that was a good question. Appreciate it. Are there are other folks uh, in the audience or on the phone who would like to speak. Uh, Joanne Preston, I think I see you raising your hand. Yes. Um, go ahead. I'm not on the phone. Um, I would like to <clears throat> strongly recommend that this go before the entire ta Transportation Advisory Committee. I'm sure they're meeting soon. I couldn't. I'm on, on with you, so I couldn't look it up because I think it, it needs full consideration. Um, I, I live at 42 Mystic Lake Drive, which is near Arlington Center. And I spent the year, 10 months of it, five days a week, going twice each day to the Audison School. There's an enormous amount of traffic that, that, that the Audison School generates, not just in the morning, but there's the after school program, which will be when people are going to the restaurant. Um, people get out different times of the day. And I think that any traffic study should take that into consideration because it's hard to say. There are over a thousand students and staff who will be traveling there regularly. And I think that's a major consideration to me. Plus, um, some of the students walk after school, and I'm wondering what they're doing about pedestrian safety in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, Steve Revelak, go ahead. Hello, Mr. Chair, Stephen Revelak, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Uh, I'll be brief. I'd like to uh, express my appreciation to the board for your diligence, patience, and attention to detail throughout this process. But um, I think this is a good commercial project, and I encourage you to um, keep working with the applicant to move it forward. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else on uh, in the meeting that would like to speak to this matter? I think we've heard a lot of comments. Um, all right. Seeing none, uh, I'm going to turn it back to the board. I think there are several things that we've asked for this evening, both from the town itself and from the applicant. Um, <clears throat> our next meeting is July 20th. Uh, I'm hopeful but not optimistic that the things that we've asked for can be ready by July 20th. Uh, our next meeting after that is uh, sometime in August. Jenny, I'm going to defer to you on that date. Um, but we, um, we would like to have the applicant back and continue this hearing to a, a date soon. Um, at some point, we need to, to make a decision on this one way or the other and have all of our questions answered. Uh, we have been going about this for almost a year at this point, I realized uh, earlier today. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, we've done a lot of hard work and we've done a lot of investigation. Uh, I think there are a few more things that we need to make a decision one way or the other. Uh, so I guess I would ask the town, Jenny, uh, and the applicant, how much time we might need to get all the things that we've asked for this evening, which by my list, and any of the other board members can jump in here, can, uh, can feel free to do so, is a shadow study uh, by the town for the transportation planner or TAC or some combination thereof to review the parking study to include uh, Lowell Street and uh, Audison Middle School, uh, proper elevations, and uh, answers to the driveway slope question, and um, I think there was one more thing, the easement, which will need to be uh, discussed and negotiated, and I think we're waiting on town council to, to respond to that. Jenny, did I have it all there? I have to say that I... More. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, Mary, do you want to respond first? Yeah, I, I think that it's two weeks away, but it isn't really two weeks because we have to get you the stuff in advance of the hearing. So I don't think right. July 20th is sufficient. Okay. Any of you agree from your end for the shadow study and TAC review? TAC, definitely not. Um, 
the shadow study, I, I cannot answer that this evening. I, I can also note the couple of other things that the board requested. Go ahead. Um, the first one is the uh, calculations of both the, um, of pretty much all of their dimensions uh, and how they arrived at uh, certain conclusions with regard to gross floor area, um, open space, uh, various setbacks and making sure that those setbacks are um, compliant uh, before they're asking for us to change any setbacks. And um, there were a couple of other sort of uh, design issues that I wrote down as well, including uh, a little more detail or perhaps changes to the railing at the balcony level on the fourth floor, uh, the specifications of the materials being um, tied directly to building elevations and shown um, as such. Um, signage uh, with regard to uh, traffic exiting Clark Street. Um, much better detail on the turning radius, as I think you already said. The building context in, it with, in a relationship to the adjacent properties. The elevation cut through for the driveway entry. Um, and then I think I got everything else. I, I don't need to, uh, the handicap parking was something mentioned. Um, the, a greater uh, explanation of the trees on the property, uh, what is staying on the property. That was it. Okay, that's a lot. Uh, that was so, in addition to everything you said. Okay, so our next meeting is the 20th. It sounds like that's not feasible. Uh, I think the meeting after that is the third, but I don't think that's feasible either, correct? Yeah, I think. Hang on, Jean. So I think our meeting after that would be August 17th. August 17th. Yeah. Go ahead, Jean. All right, there, there are a few other issues I'd like to raise that came to me as people were speaking and also a couple I didn't get before. One is, it wasn't clear to me whether they would allow a, let a left turn out of the traffic drop-off area or whether people would have to make a right turn on the Mass Ave. So I'd like the traffic study to look at those two options um, to see if there's any difference um, between them. On the shadow study, I feel like if we don't have the expertise on your staff, Jenny, that uh, we should get an outside independent expert and, and initiate the process so that the applicant would pay for that. So I think it would be helpful maybe if you could report back to Andrew whether, you know, we, we, we have the staff who can do it and who have the time or not. Because if we don't, there's an alternative that I'd like us to implement to get uh, the shadow study done by um, an independent party. Um, on the setback on Clark Street, I'm not sure what to do about that because I, I am not gonna vote for this project with the current setback on Clark Street. And I just wanna put that out now so that the applicants understand that so that they can determine whether they wish to show us another option in which they can meet the 20 foot setback that's required in our two zones or get us part way there so that um, the board can determine whether exercise its authority. But I, for one, um, mm -hmm. am not going to vote for this with the present setbacks. And um, for the um, step backs, I do not think we have the authority to change those. So I am, my vote is going to be contingent on it having the appropriate step backs on both the Mass Ave and the Clark Street side. So if they want to show how they would do that, I think that would be helpful also. Okay, thanks, Jean. Other comments from members of the board? Okay, so I think what we would do is continue this meeting, this hearing to August 17th, just looking at my calendar here. Is that right, Jenny? And is that, I see you nodding. Is that Yes, I'm sorry, fair August to, 17th. I'm looking at my calendar at the same time, yes. Yeah. Is that fair to, to you, Mary and Jim? Yes. To get, to get the things that we need? Okay, all right. And I don't want to 
spend too, too much time more on asking questions and having you go back to the drawing board. So if we could get as complete a package as well and enough in advance as possible, the members of this board would appreciate it. Um, and then you can work with, with Jenny to get that in place. So uh, with that, I'll take a motion to continue the hearing on docket. Uh, Andrew, could I just make a clarification? Go ahead, Ken. Um, Andrew, I just, I, I was um, trying to raise my hand um, and, and I, I, Mary answered the question on the 17th, but um, anyone that knows me knows I'm a straightforward individual and I always deal above board. And I do appreciate your indulgence as well as your, uh, your colleagues on the board. But um, as you know, there has been numerous delays on this, um, some that we will take responsibility for and much um, relates to various um, interjections of informations and directions and, and, and indications and then um, stepping back from those indications. As a prime example of that, um, this board has asked over the last uh, couple of hearings to expend tens of thousands of dollars. And as I think it was explained um, and pretty clear, clearly made, communicated to the department, as a result of a couple of um, members in, in, in uh, comments, uh, which I do appreciate their frankness um, at a prior meeting. They then came to the last meeting and they, they both indicated that the setback issue was involved. So we went forward and we spent tens of thousands of dollars. So then to follow up at this meeting and have that totally retrenched, and then for um, the town of Arlington, um, through the, these, um, these appointed individuals um, to then suggest that we continue to spend money as they both raise an issue that had been put to rest in their own words at a last meeting, I, I think is, um, is just um, um, unrealistic to request. And I think the town of Arlington really needs to come to grips with what that is. A couple of meetings ago, um, I raised, um, to, um, to one of the members um, when he pushed back on the step back, I asked him about 117 Broadway. That building is identical to this. It's also right down the street from Mr. Loretti's house and there wasn't uh, much focus. It got bonus space. Um, there's a lot of other things. I happen to like that project. I think it was great. I think the use is good and I think a lot, a lot of other things. So I think we, we and I do appreciate um, people's comment, whether positive and negative, as long as there's sincerity in, in bringing a, a, a better product for the town, which I happen to love and have spent a lot of time and energy on this when I could have done cookie cutter condominiums or apartments on that site to not only give this town what they really wanted for in that mixed use, which was to have commercial development, not an apartment house or something with a management office in it and calling that a mixed use, but a property that would contribute 100 percent to the commercial valuation and potential tax base if the town elected to classify. In addition, there's a tremendous amount of hotel revenue. Now I'm not sitting here crying poor mouth and I'm not sitting here asking the town to vote something through that they don't want solely on economics. What I am asking is to be treated like everyone else and to be given consistent direction from meeting to meeting so we can all um, work collectively if we want it to go forward. And if it's something that we don't want, then we should all be honest with each other and say that. It was proposed to me by the town a few years ago I should, to do a 40B. I didn't want to do a 40B there because this is, to me, a legacy property and something for the town. So I don't want to go on. I've exceeded my three minutes and I do apologize for that. Um, but um, I think you people have spent a tremendous amount of time. I've spent a tremendous amount of time. And I don't think it's fair to any of us if we don't want to be honest and, and deal with these issues and respect opinions of people in this town and who are qualified. And I'm talking about Doug Hine. I'm talking about Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor. I'm talking about my architect. I'm talking about an illustrator who teaches other architects about how to do this. When people want to come in 
as um, make-believe experts and then drive people to go spend money, create issues, and then try to exploit them. Um, I think we really got to buckle down. And I know a lot of that's out of your control. And you personally have done a great job to try to keep it focused. And I do appreciate that. But um, I, uh, I just don't want to leave this con conversation tonight misleading you that I think all of those things can be achieved for the 17th, 17th because for me to go forward and expend that money when two members who indicated within you know the last meeting that they that setback issue was resolved to now say they won't vote for it predicated on that um just absolutely um is crazy for me to go forward um to do a lot of those things so um unless you know we're going to take the guidance from town council or someone else and not suggest that the man is conflicted because he happens to also represent another um, board in the town. Um, wow. And again, I'm sorry, I've, I've exceeded. I appreciate your indulgence, but I just, I didn't want to leave uh, the conversation misleading you um, that I think I can come back on the 17th, but we will endear over the next week to refine that and get back to you if we can fulfill that commitment. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate the candor. Thank you. And uh, I, know, I know this has been a long process. Uh, it's, it's certainly a project that I personally like and would love to see in the town. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of myself, <clears throat> not on behalf of the other members of the board. Uh, I know that, that there are some neighborhood concerns that we've tried to, to listen to and uh, account for and not just uh, rubber stamp a project because it's good for the town. And I, I think you know, there, is, there are a lot of benefits here. And uh, I hope I hope the, the things that are being asked of you don't dissuade you from uh, coming back, but um, we'll get there. Gene, I see your hand raised. Let's not get into a back and forth, but I'll let you make one final not, comment. Yeah, I, I agree with everything Andrew just said. I don't think anybody on this board is opposed to the idea of having a hotel here. It's how does it fit in with the requirements of the bylaws and what needs to be done and meets the residents' concerns as much as possible. I will say that what happened at the last meeting was uh, the town council said to us, even though the bylaws say the step back is on the third floor, they had been uh, mis mispublished, let's say, and the vote was the fourth floor. So we all agreed that the step back should be on the fourth floor and nobody has gone back from that because that's what the town council advised us was necessary. On the other hand, at no time did I ever say that I would agree to the side street, the Clark Street um, setback. And in fact, at the last meeting, Mr. Lau and I specifically said we didn't agree on that and we would see if we could work out our disagreements. So that's where I am. Thank you. All right. So we are getting late in the evening. I think all that has been said tonight has been said. Uh, we still have another hearing to open up. I see Mr. Nessie waiting patiently there. So what I would like to do is have a motion to continue this hearing to August 17th, 2020. So moved. 7 p.m. Second. Probably. All right. So motion by Gene, second by Ken. Uh, I'll just go down the line, do a roll call vote, Gene. Yes. Ken. Yes. David. Aye. Rachel. Yes. And I vote yes. So thank you, Mary and Jim, you for your much. time. Oh, uh, we, we do appreciate the work, and hopefully we can uh, get this resolved one way or the other at uh, yeah. the next meeting. Appreciate it. Thank you both. All right. So that hearing's continued to August 17th. That's docket number 3602. Uh, it's closer this evening. Moving on to docket number 3625, which is a continued public hearing for 882-892 Mass Ave. Uh, Mr. Nessie, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, I am here with uh, John Murphy, the project manager for the proposal. Uh, also with Aaron Mackey, the surveyor. Uh, with Adam from Market uh, Architects uh, as well. 
And uh, we didn't really uh, make a presentation last time, uh, but we came in at a point uh, where I had asked to have the matter continued, and uh, I did benefit, and my clients did benefit greatly from the comments that were made, uh, despite the fact that uh, we had not really made a presentation. And one of the, uh, the points that was made during the course of that hearing by Mr. Brunel was uh, that it might make sense to have Kin, uh, in fact, meet with us with respect to uh, our proposal, because quite frankly, uh, my impression was that the proposal did not go over very well with the members on the board. Uh, well, we have done that. We have met with Kin on a number of occasions. Uh, Kin has met with my team even more than he's met with me. And we have come up with uh, a, uh, what we think is a much better proposal uh, than we had initially. Uh, just to refresh, we're in a B2 zone, uh, which is a very, very unusual zone in that neighborhood. Everything around the B2 zone is either B2A, uh, B3, B4, R6, okay? Matter of fact, there's an apartment house directly abutting us uh, to the uh, western part of the uh, property that uh, is above us. It has more stories than we're proposing. We're proposing to demolish the existing one-story uh, storefronts. Uh, and we're proposing to construct uh, in uh, place of the one-story storefronts uh, a 21 one-bedroom residential units in 1,300 square feet of commercial space. One of the points that came across to me loudly and clearly at the last hearing was that there had to be a better invitation to commercial uh, uh, customers and the commercial environment on Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, I think we have done that. Uh, again, meeting with Ken, we had some very uh, good uh, suggestions uh, in that regard. What we have done is, as you now look at our plans, uh, you will see, particularly if you look at the rendering, you'll see that the uh, commercial property essentially is fronting on Mass Ave. Uh, to get to the residential property, you have to make the turn to the right off of Mass Ave onto Lachlan Ave, and then you get to the residential property out back. Now, we don't have uh, commercial on the entire first floor, but we have commercial on the portion of the first floor that I believe does, in fact, front on Massachusetts Avenue. I think what the board needs to understand, and John Murphy is going to address this uh, shortly, the board needs to understand that this particular site is contaminated. John will tell you, I, I don't want to steal his thunder, but John is going to tell you that we've spent a quarter of a million dollars already on uh, soil issues, and the anticipation is that we're going to spend another million dollars as well. Now, the Pescudo family is not the Myrak family. Uh, they're not in the same league as the Myrak family. They don't have the economic ability to do the things that the Myrak family could do. What they would like to do is develop this site, okay, and develop uh, uh, the site within their budgetary uh, uh, ability. Uh, John will talk with you about uh, his efforts with respect to financing as well. I think those are all things you need to know. Another uh, important point is that one of the reasons why I had asked that the matter be continued last time was there was a lot of discussion about the fact that there might be a right of way uh, for either the MBTA or the town with respect to the sidewalk, uh, because the sidewalk was in close relation to, in fact, the bus shelter. Well, in fact, that never uh, has occurred, okay? Uh, I have a 200-page title examination, which we performed, okay? And that shows that there ha never has been a taking by the town, uh, by the state, by anyone uh, with respect to enlarging the sidewalk. Now, what we're proposing to do is to, uh, despite the fact that we don't have to do it, we're proposing to move the building back 
two feet from where we proposed to uh, construct it initially, so there would be more space between uh, the front of our building and the bus shelter. We're, we're prepared to do that, and I'm committing right now that the client will do that. Uh, the, some of the zoning relief that we would need, and by the way, uh, another change from the last time uh, with, re uh, with respect to what the plans had shown was that we now have a five foot buffer in the back of the lot connecting uh, the parking lot uh, with, uh, uh, with the R2 zone. Uh, we are proposing, as I think you are aware, 25 parking spaces, which does comply with the parking requirements uh, with respect to the parking lot. We didn't have uh, a setback or a buffer in the last proposal. We now have a five foot setback a buffer, which uh, again is required by the zoning bylaw. Another issue is uh, with respect to the uh, setback. We're going, uh, and I know that uh, Gene has talked about the setbacks and uh, uh, he's made a statement pretty clearly stating his position uh, with, res uh, with respect to setbacks. If we don't get relief to setbacks, we're not going anywhere with this project, okay? Uh, we, we need a setback with respect to the seven and a half foot setback on the fourth story, okay, above the third, on the fourth, okay, because of the fact that we're moving the building back two and a half feet, or strike that, two feet from where it was before. So we do need relief with respect to that setback uh, if in fact we're going to make this proposal work in terms of the a number of units that uh, we'd like to have in order to be able to get financing and in, in order to be able to comply with our budget. Uh, we also uh, would need uh, relief with respect to the fact that we do, in fact, a, a, but a residential zone. And I, I went to school on what occurred at the last meeting, uh, and I noted uh, in Jenny's memo to the board uh, that the, she had also brought to the attention of the board that on the Mass Ave frontage, the adjoining lot is an apartment building in an R6 zone and she mentioned that there would be a, uh, a requirement there to have a setback, uh, 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 coincidental with that for that particular zone. On the Lachlan frontage, uh, the true family is in an R2 zone with a setback of 20 feet. Uh, Jenny does indicate that uh, in her memo that per section 5.3.16, uh, you folks have the ability to, uh, to vary that setback. Now, we wouldn't be asking you to vary that setback if, if we didn't think we were giving you something. Uh, and the architect will talk about the affordable housing units uh, and the like. Uh, uh, with respect to open space, if you look at the uh, dimensional uh, sheet with respect to open space, uh, we, we have no open space, basically, okay? And what we're proposing to do is to have a, a 60 feet of uh, 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 usable open space. Uh, and if you note uh, from looking at the dimensional form, the landscape open space is twice what it needs to be. It's 20.1% 20 uh, 20 where zoning requires 10%. Uh, now, we have trees in the landscape open space that uh, we're proposing. Uh, if we needed to take some of those trees down to, in fact, use that space as usable open space, that's something we can certainly talk about. All right, what I'd like to do is let John Murphy tell you uh, what his position is from the point of view of how the project is going in, uh, as far as environmental is concerned. Uh, and uh, as far as the financing is concerned, one more thing. Uh, we have, uh, and I have been talking with uh, tenants, okay? I've uh, been talking with John Leone, counsel for one of the tenants as well. <clears throat> and those discussions continue at this point, and nothing precipitous is happening at this point as far as tenants are concerned. John, why don't you jump in? Thank you, Bob. And Good evening, members of the board. I wonder if 
Jenny, for this part of it, if we could get up the colored site plan, perhaps it's a, it's a one page that kind of shows exactly what's going on and where, um, you know, just real quickly, I think what I want to get across is that, you know, we as a team won this project to be successful from the start. John, could you just, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Could you just state your full name and, and who you're with, please, your company? Sure. My name is John Murphy from Summit Real Estate Strategies. We are working directly with the Pasciuto family on the development of this project. Um, other you. members of the team, Al yep, Alan and Major, civil engineers and market, market square architects, the architect on the project. So when we originally came in before, we thought we were going down a path that was going to be received well. It didn't. And that's okay because we've been wanting this to be a you know, collaboration, something that the town and the board and everyone could be proud of. And I think what we came in today, tonight with is something completely different, which just echoes that. You know, we've looked at a number of different options when it came to this project in terms of how we can get around and make it successful after dealing with the environmental issue, which I know a lot of people are curious about. We looked at numbers of stories, units, retail mix can we do podium parking to try and help absorb the cost of the environmental can we overhang the building you know none of these things really penciled out to the point where we could where we can make it work so what we did after the last meeting that was continued was we took everything everyone said and tried to do the best that we could so as bob said when we brought the building two feet back from where it previously was proposed, which we do have another one page plan on here showing the existing building, the property line, the previously proposed building and where our current proposed building is. So I know that's in the package, but when we bring this building back, we can't go directly all the way back with it foot for foot. So it actually shrunk the footprint a little bit. And what that did to those top story studios was with the top story step back was make them just a little bit too small where they got a little bit uncomfortable to live in, in our opinion. So that is the main reason why we are asking for relief on that top story when we bring that building back to turn those back into one bedrooms to make them more comfortable to live in. Um, we've essentially almost doubled our retail space. We have, we're offering three affordable units, which are labeled on the plan. I think overall we're helping this new building be a little bit more in compliance with the zoning and all setbacks where otherwise they weren't. And we're taking a property as existing zero green space and providing far more than what is required. And I do want to give credit where credit is due. We probably, we definitely not, would not have gotten to this point if it weren't for Ken. He helped us get over a lot of hurdles and his experience was greatly appreciated and extremely valuable. So we do just really want to thank him for collaborating with us on this. Um, and I'll let the architect and civil engineer touch on some of these things, but we have the shadow study. We have how the building fits into the community. You can see what the roof is going to look like from across the street. So we do want to touch on all of those things. I would like to provide a quick background on the environmental before I turn it over to Alan and Major. This goes all the way back to, I think, around 2013, where the issue was identified by the DEP. You know, the Pasciuto family basically from that time to almost a year and a half ago tried everything they could to save the existing property and building through injections, monitoring, testing, more injections, and ended up, you know, spending a solid six digit. Uh, number on trying to save it to the point where the professionals who do this every day say this isn't working. So the only way to take care of this is to actually get to that material, which happens to be located underneath the slab in the basement. So, you know, it's mandated that this be dealt with at this point. There's no way around it. Um, we have to get that material out of there irregardless. So now we're left with, we want to make, put something in the place of this building that both can handle and absorb the, you know, the cost of this environmental and all the other things that we're doing with this project. And to be completely honest, it has not been easy. It's going to be an extra million dollars at from here on forward, depending on how much material actually needs to come out. It could be more to deal with this issue. And the real problem is there's not a lot of units here to absorb that cost. So when we look at options, say expanding the retail to all the first floor, you know, that's not very well received kind of given the current environment by, uh, 
financing institutions. You know, unfortunately, we have been turned down, even with this current proposal from many lenders, just because they're not confident that the, the amount of revenue the project brings in, that they're going to get paid back. So that is kind of one, that is our biggest hurdle that we are trying to address currently. So we're trying to hear what everyone has to say, take it under consideration and kind of hopefully meet in, in the middle here somewhere where we can have a successful project that's at the end of the day that, that everyone is, a, is proud of. Um, we will be, we're getting many proposals on solar as well. That's something we'd like to incorporate here. Uh, we think we've done a good job with complying with uh, bike laws and can help us through that as well. Um, and I think at this point, it would be great to have Alan and Major and the architects take you through a few things and then get some feedback from, from members of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so whoever's next, please announce your name and, and company and, and go ahead. Sure. Thank you, John and Andrew. Uh, my name is Aaron Mackey. I'm with Allen and Major Associates. Uh, we're the civil engineers on this project. Um, Jenny, if you could just navigate to the uh, C102 layout and materials that was up previously, the colored up plan, I think that would be a good place to start. Um, was the, the other, other one, the yeah. other plan? Yeah. The that site other, plan. Yep. They call it up site plan. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll just run through a quick summary. I'll re reiterate a few things that uh, Bob and John have pointed on. Um, the existing conditions of this site, the site's located on the corner of Mass Ave and Lachland Ave. As you can see, uh, the site consists of two parcels totaling 14,381 square feet. Uh, the site is zoned B2, neighborhood business. Uh, there's B2A, major business across Mass Ave, B4, a vehicular orientated business across Lockland and R2 family to the south, R6 medium density uh, apartments to the west. Um, the existing building is a one story brick building uh, that's approximately 5,000 square feet. Uh, it's located, actually, it's over the property line um, on Lockland Ave by approximately 1.7 feet, um, which you can see we have fix that issue at that corner. We pulled the, the building back. Um, the existing lot is entirely covered with pavement and building. Uh, there's no landscaping existing. Uh, the site is serviced by muni municipal water, sewer, gas, telephone, and electric. Um, there's very little in the way of existing drainage infrastructure. Uh, there's only one existing catch basin that's in the existing parking lot. Um, that receives surface runoff and roof runoff, which discharges to out to Lachland Ave. Um, so the proposed site plan is what you're looking at here. Uh, the proposed building is 4,430 square feet, a four-story building. There's 21 apartment units, one bedroom units proposed. Um, I do apologize that this plan says 22 units. Um, that is an error. We, that'll be updated on future submissions. Um, it was 22 before, but through discussions with Kin, we had increased the, the retail component um, and lost one unit in the program. Um, so that will be updated. Um, the building has been set back a minimum of 2.7 feet from the property line at the corner of Mass Ave and Lachland Ave, um, 3.4 feet from the eastern side yard setback, and 63 feet from the rear yard setback. Um, these dimensions shall meet the dimensional regulations listed within the B2 zone for a mixed use building with the front yard and side yards minimum of zero and a rear yard of 20.3 feet required. That's calculated based upon the length of the building. 
Um, in this updated submission, revised submission, we provided a five foot wide buffer strip with abravite plantings um, and a five foot fence. Um, these were proposed along the southern property line with the R2 zone. Um, this was achieved with a reduction of the drive aisle um, and pulling, we also um, pulled the building back from Mass Ave as well through this reiteration. Um, the proposed parking lot, uh, it, there's 25 parking spaces proposed where 25 are required. Um, the proposed parking lot is proposed entirely within the existing constraints um, of the existing pavement. Um, up there's, there will be approximately 2,083 square feet of impervious surface being replaced with landscaping. As you can see on this plan, all the landscaping areas that we are now proposing. Um, with that, I will touch on the open space proposed per section 5.3.21. 10% uh, of the lot shall be landscaped open space and 20% shall be usable open space, which totals 30% uh, open space. Um, the existing site is non-conforming and has 0% usable open space and 5.3% landscaped open space with the existing sidewalk area. Um, the proposed plan has 20.1% lot landscape space with 5.6% sidewalk and 14.5% landscaping. Um, there is a bike rack pad proposed along Lockland Ave, which is providing 0.4% usable open space. Um, as Bob had mentioned in the beginning, um, the applicant is definitely willing to remove trees and shrubs on either side of the dumpster pad and convert some of that area for usable open space, um, which would propose a total of 10.5% usable open and 10% landscaping, still meeting the landscaping minimum. However, we felt the plan as proposed with a total lot open space of 20.5% um, with the proposed landscaping as is was the best approach for the site um, and a waiver would be requested from the usable requirement. Um, and we'd like to keep the landscaping as we show it here. Um, the bike parking requirement per the town's bicycle parking guidelines. Um, the long-term bicycle parking requirement would be 33 spaces required. Um, these are provided within the interior bike room. Um, Market Square will touch on that uh, shortly. Um, the short-term bicycle parking, only three spaces would be required based on the units and the um, retail component. Um, three would be required and we're proposing 10 um, exterior spaces along Lockland Ave. Um, the drainage proposed, uh, Jenny, if you could navigate to the site plans, possibly, I'm just gonna touch on the drainage and the utilities briefly, if possible. Can you tell me what page you want me to start on? Please. Sure. Drainage sheet would be C103. So that is the fifth sheet in. Working on it. Okay, yep, just one more above this. Perfect. Okay. So this is the proposed drainage plan. Um, as I mentioned before, there's very little in the way of the existing drainage system. Uh, there's only one existing catch basin uh, on site uh, that receives surface runoff and roof runoff, which discharges out to Lockland Ave. As you can see with the proposed plan here, 
Um, we are going to replicate that with some improvements. Um, the approximately 2,000 square feet of impervious be is being replaced with the landscaping space. Um, with this reduction, the site will meet the stormwater requirements of the Town of Arlington and the Mass DEP stormwater standards because um, that will produce a, a reduction in the rate of volume of runoff, rate, rate and volume. Um, the insta installation of this new catch basin with a hood will remove floatables and oils from the stormwater. Um, also, the installation of the new manhole for clean roof runoff to bypass the catch basin. So the clean roof will just flow right through as the catch basin will collect any sediment and oils. Um, these plans were sent in drainage summary was sent to the city engineer in March uh, for his review and we've received no comments to date. Um, Jenny, if you could just scroll down one more sheet to the utilities plan. Um, the utility sheet is very straightforward. The site will be serviced by municipal water and sewer from Mass Ave. Uh, the site electrical and telecom uh, will service the parcel underground. And this is consistent with the recommendations of the environmental design review to have these connections installed under, underground. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to touch on that uh, diagram that was up earlier that compared the proposals. If you could just pull that up quickly. Thank you. Perfect. Yes, as you can see here, the property line is outlined in red, bus shelter in yellow. Um, the existing building is in blue. The previously proposed building is in the pink and the current proposed building is outlined in green. Um, I just would like to note that this current proposal, we've pulled the building back uh, 2.4 feet from the existing proposal um, while maintaining the separation we had from Lachlan Ave of 2.9 feet. Um, and also, uh, yeah, still 2.9 from Lachlan Ave. And we've also provided the five foot buffer um, with 14.7% green space over the entire parcel. So with that, I'd like to pass it over to Market Square. Um, Adam Aaron, Webb. real quick, Aaron, real quick, it's John Murphy. How far is the new proposed building from the property line on Mass Ave, say where the bus shelter is? Um, that's approximate. It, it varies because of the, the, the skew, but I will say at, I know at the corner that is, would be completely to the West. That's about 5.5 feet. And as you make your way towards the bus shelter, you can see the dimension that's on there. It's 8.2 feet at that first door. And then yeah. it's going to just increase as you head towards Lachlan Ave. Okay. Thank you. Great. Yep. And Adam, Adam, you want to jump in? I certainly will. Can everyone hear me all right? We can hear you. Wonderful. Well, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you uh, for hearing us today. I'm going to keep this as brief as possible. Um, as just, uh, do me a favor, Adam. Just tell us yep. your name and who you're with for the record. Yep. I, was, I was almost there. Uh, Adam Wagner, partner with Market Square Architects. Um, so what I'd like to do tonight, I don't want to take a ton of your time because I know it's getting late in the evening. Um, Jen, if you can go to the first architectural plan, which would be the basement plan, what I'd like to do is walk you through what we've provided here. Uh, and certainly we are open to any questions that you have about uh, the proposal before you. Uh, if we could start with that basement floor plan. Wonderful. Um, so here you have it because of the remediation one of the advantages we get out of this is we're going to have a full basement in this building the basement will be accessed by both staircases and the elevator and because of that it allows us to provide a lot of storage capacity for not only the residential uh, units but also for the commercial users uh, i also want you to note that here in the basement we're showing a substantial amount of bicycle storage 
Um, based on a, the area calculations, we have storage for up to 34 bicycles. Um, and as I previously said, uh, this is fully accessible from the elevator. So people will be able to get their bicycles in and out of the space very easily uh, and hopefully make this project a much more bicycle friendly um, building. Uh, with that, if you could move up to the first floor. So ground level, as previously mentioned, um, from the last proposal that was put before this board, we removed one of the residential units. That put us from 22 down to 21. And that residential unit was one of the ones that faced along Mass Ave. Uh, the reason why we removed it is we really wanted to give that commercial um, hierarchy to Massachusetts Avenue, um, where we have retail, slash office uses, the tenants haven't been determined yet, and the main lobby coming into the residential space. So from a, a public facade standpoint, um, it really appears as first floor commercial, even though we do have a couple of residential units on the back side. Uh, as mentioned, all of the units are one bedroom apartment, um, uh, and, and the designs are shown here in this package. So we have three of them there on the first floor, again on the back side of the building. And as you move up to the second and third floors, uh, here we would have the two staircases, the elevator, and the remainder being uh, the balance of the 22, excuse me, 21 residential units. Uh, as part of this package, the next page, we have also provided you with a roof plan. Um, at this stage of the game, we certainly don't have a fully engineered mechanical system for this building, uh, but we're already looking at and considering how we're going to be able to appropriately screen the mechanical units. Um, the, uh, the mechanical system for the apartment units themselves is still in question, whether that's a uh, gas fired or a, an electric system, but in any instance, we will be having condenser units, which we can locate on the roof. We can screen them via the parapet. Um, usually they're, they're pretty low units. They're no more than three feet tall. Uh, and then we're also showing here where we do have the elevator overrun and roof hatch access. Um, so there's no rooftop deck up here. This is for mechanical access only. Um, the next plans are 2D elevation drawings. Um, as mentioned already, we worked with Kim, uh, really uh, worked to create a hierarchy in the design, clean up the facade, uh, enhance the pedestrian scale of the building, um, and really took a look at what's happening with this building as opposed to what, ha what is happening with the neighboring buildings around it. Um, materials on the front facade, uh, materials on all facades really, um, will include fiber cement siding, fiber cement paneling. Uh, we're still working through the details of that. Um, as you can see, we've used a different window type on the first floor where we have commercial versus the residential units. Um, it, I, I think the, the ultimate goal here was to create something that fit in better with uh, the surrounding context, but also provided a, a pedestrian scale um, and in general was just a, a, a good looking building that would enhance uh, the community. The next page, um, we've done some uh, elevations to show the context. Uh, so this one is looking straight down Massachusetts Avenue. I'm uh, probably familiar with the building on the right that was a more recently constructed building. And then the large building that looms behind ours is the existing uh, brick building, I'm sure you're also familiar with. So in general, our building is um, intended to be kept very much in keeping with the scale of the neighboring properties. Um, here you see it straight on looking across Massachusetts Avenue um, in relation to the, to the brick building. Next page of our package includes some shadow studies. Um, so these are pulled from our three-dimensional model of the building, uh, various times of day, various times of year to show what the impacts of our building will be on the uh, surrounding buildings, surrounding properties. And then on the last page here, 
excuse me, last two pages, we've provided you with two photorealistic renderings. Uh, these are drawn from our architectural model of the building and pasted into photographs that we have, um, really showing you the context, um, the scale, proportion, uh, and hopefully you'll recognize that it's something in keeping with what you want to see developed there in Arlington. So we're more than willing to answer any questions you have, but thank you for your consideration. Oh. Bob, anything else to add before we, we turn no, it to the board? I, that, uh, that does it for now. Yeah. That was a, that was an incredibly thorough presentation. I think all three of you uh, for having that <clears throat> ready for us. I think that answered a lot of the questions uh, many of us will have. Bob, I, I just wanted to ask you a question or two. And you mentioned um, you mentioned that you, you were in discussions with the tenants. Are, are those ongoing? Is that something that we're going to hear about during public comment tonight? Or I hope not. I did speak with uh, uh, John Leone uh, with respect to the group that uh, is going to the high school, uh, I believe, uh, at the end of August, uh, I believe. Okay. I did speak with him uh, earlier today. And uh, if they speak, they speak. But uh, my understanding is that uh, uh, mm -hmm. they were not going to. But if they do, they do. Okay. It, it, and, and part of the reason I ask that is because, as I said in the last hearing, that isn't something over which this board has any power or purview. And it's really not appropriate for us to, to get into the details as we get into public comment. But I wanted to be sure that those, those things were being arranged and, and that we, as a board, can kind of put our own minds at ease uh, as far as displacing tenants. Um, as far as the commercial space goes, talk to me about how that has changed substantially since the first uh, proposal you put forth a month ago. Well, it's changed because we've doubled the space, essentially, uh, the commercial space. And I, my memory is that one of the real concerns uh, at the last uh, hearing was that there really was no real commercial identity of the building on Massachusetts Avenue uh, in that uh, village, uh, in that uh, business village uh, district. So what we've tried to do is to give that to the members of the board, okay, by doubling the, uh, the commercial space. Our problem is, as John Murphy mentioned earlier, uh, that we need to have this project uh, be economically feasible as well. So we couldn't really devote the entire first floor to commercial space, but what we have done is that portion of the building that fronts on Mass Ave, uh, and again, the, the business village uh, uh, district uh, is now commercial and it's not residential. You don't get the residential until you make the turn onto Lachlan Avenue, and you can see in that rendering, the door to the residential under the sign 882. Uh, so that's what we've tried to do at this point. And, and Bob, I can jump in here real quick on and talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, go ahead, John, um, John. John Murphy again. So we did a little bit more research into this. We had an independent um, brokerage firm do a study. This is pre-COVID-19 of how much vacant space there was in Arlington. And as of February, before all this happened, there was right around 25,000 square feet of vacant re retail commercial sublettable space in Arlington. Um, we also looked across the street and that at that other new project, the how long that building took to lease up. And I believe that took a couple of years on the commercial front. And you know, the real issue for us is lenders at this point are saying, we're not counting your commercial space, that we're only gonna base our lending off the residential units because of what we've all just gone through is you don't really know. So if you want to get this project done, we need to feel comfortable. And so we're discounting that essentially. So what mm -hmm. we've done is say, all right, we're going to do the best. We're going to offer all of Massachusetts Avenue, but there's no other way to really chop up that first floor that makes a lot of sense. You know, if we got rid of another unit in the back corner and just made a commercial space longer, you know, I'm not really sure that that, it becomes a little bit of an awkward, awkward, either large space that's too large for a smaller retail tenant or a larger retail tenant it's too small for. So 
you know, I also want to touch on, because a comment was made by the last presentation, uh, that there's no commitment by anyone at this point to take any of this commercial space. There's, as of right now, there's no management office going in there, not going in there. It is wide open for whoever we can attract to come into this as we are in the middle of construction and we will hopefully build it out for them. So that's okay. our plan with it as of now. Is the, is the marketing plan there for a restaurant, for a, a preschool daycare issue, or is it is it built to suit? It, it, it's honestly built to suit. Um, for whoever is interested we're not looking one way or another to be honest mm -hmm. okay it's okay. kind of whoever we can we can yeah get. i think i think i think down the road we'd be interested in seeing uh, a marketing plan um <clears throat> and if there were discussions with some of the existing tenants about staying on if they could uh, move that might not be a bad discussion to have but uh, i don't want to get too too far into that or uh, it's just and we have had those discussions and the Prosciutto family does have other properties that we will be sure to make sure that those tenants also know about, about this space. The, the hard thing is, is just is asking someone to leave for say a year or so, and then making that work for their business and then come back in, you know, that's, sure. that's hard. And a lot of times too, like you, you'll see across the street, you'll finish enti this entire project and you don't even have anyone. So irregardless of what your marketing plan is, you know, it's sometimes easier easier said than done unfortunately yeah i know i know from uh the building across the street was a learning experience in in many ways and uh <clears throat> the the commercial space of it was was a sticking point um but i know that we've done uh, or the department itself has done research and, and the typical time that they've discovered is something like 18 months from completion to, to, to full tenancy and so that's that's uh i i understand that um I also understand that you're facing some issues with commercial lenders right now. Uh, business I'm in, we're dealing with the same issue. So I, I, I can respect that to, to some degree. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Ken Lau. Uh, Ken, I know you've had discussions with, with these folks and worked hard on getting this to where it is. Um, before I do that, I, I, I do want to say that um, you know, this is not necessarily perfect, but I really do appreciate the work that's been put in here and uh, how responsive bob and and the rest of the team have been to the concerns you heard of the last hearing and i hope uh keep that in mind as we move forward so go ahead kim well thank you uh andrew um i do want to say that this is one of the mo um, better complete presentations we had in a long time um and uh, i want to thank you for thank you them for that uh making the, all those changes from what we had before to what it is now. And the commitment to uh, make a few more minor adjustments that we've talked about. Um, I know that they are walking on a, um, uh, a fine balancing uh, of getting this building financed and built to some of the requirements of, that we have put upon them. And I, I appreciate the effort which they've done trying to mitigate that. Um, I appreciate the fact that they, they pushed the building back. They gave a buffer zone in the back. Um, they, um, I think the things they're asking for uh, right now, as far as relief from us, uh, I'm in agreement with. Um, uh, one is, I believe, the reduction in the, the drive lane uh, two is uh, the reduction in the setbacks along Lakeland. Uh, um, and I think uh, they worked well with us in order to get some of those. And I much appreciate that. Um, some of the other comments I still would like to add is um, along the elevation, I'd like to maybe minimize the signage uh, that's on the front corner of the building, 882. Maybe bring that down to you know somewhere near the door, um, and make it less obvious, and maybe add more windows on the lower floor on the retail side to make it a little bit more retail-like. Uh, maybe bring up the cornice that's uh, between the first floor and the second floor. Right now, it looks like the cornice is aligned with uh, the floor level. I may say, well, we do the same thing, which you've done above, and maybe elevate 
that floor, the cornice, to maybe just a little below the window. So you have more of a, a sign ban uh, opportunity for the retail. So if you look at those, uh, those windows uh, uh, along the retail side, um, if you look at the bottom right hand uh, drawing that's shown right now, if we raise that cornice up a little higher so it, it gets up to the, maybe the, under, the bottom of the windows on the second floor, it gives you an opportunity to put a sign band above the windows on the first floor for the retail and then increase the number of windows there so it looks more retail-like. Right now, it looks like punched openings in a wall. It could be office. It could be retail, but you're not sure. If you do the other way, I think you uh, add more windows, you'll get that. I really like the fact that you um, created little small plazas uh, out front of these retails. So if it was uh, a small um, you know, coffee shop or a restaurant, you know, there's, there's opportunities to have a little outdoor seating area out there to maybe activate uh, the streetscape a little bit. I, I think that's, or some place to sit out and just enjoy yourself. I think having that front edge there, which, you, which you've done and pulled the building back and gave us little, those little plazas there, I think it could be very nice. I think that being on a bus stop is also very nice. Having some activity out there is great. So I'm encouraged that you did that and uh, you still a few more minor stuff to it. And I think you're, you're on your way there. Uh, I like what you did on the Lachlan side. You didn't treat it as a side of the building, and it's more of a, a, a front facade. So you, by adding more windows there, that's good. Uh, I think that's about it, uh, Andrew. Thanks, Kim. Uh, Rachel, I'm going to go to you next. Go ahead. Sure. Um, I'll just echo, too, that I, I appreciate the thoroughness of the, the package and um, the the attention that you paid to the to the comments that we provided last time, I will say that I'm I'm still very disappointed with the um, quantity of the commercial space that's being provided um, to go from 5,000 square feet to a single retail space that's 500 square feet in an office space. To me, does not fill the intent of the mixed use development that we had hoped to see and express to you in our last meeting. Um, 500 square foot retail space is, is very, very small and very difficult to, to lease. Um, it's, it's next to useless, you know, when you think about, you have a 50 square foot bathroom shown, typically you have a 20 to 80% stock to sales ratio. So now you're down to 360 square feet. Um, I, I, Think a lot of the problems in the town that we have with our existing retail stock are that they are too small currently and we're just exacerbating the problem by um, including two one of the two spaces um, which which i think is going to be very very difficult to lease so i would like to see efforts made to significantly increase the commercial space that you're providing on the first floor i understand the challenges that you're going through but i i just don't see how we can approve this as the type of mixed use development that we're looking for in the town without addressing that. Um, I also think that we need to relook at a lot of the materials and the articulation of the facade. It's very, very flat right now with the fiber cement panels. I agree with Ken that um, the entire commercial space really needs to be relooked at with the addition of more storefront friendly windows and a real true sign band. Um, right now, there's very little opportunity for any type of retail or restaurant presence on the, on the first floor, um, which again, will make it more difficult for you to lease. And I, I really think that the, the corner, if you're going to be celebrating the corner and the entrance to the residential units in the way that, that you are, by um, pulling it out in terms of um, articulating the, the corner, um, chamfering the corner rather, and changing the color that you really need a lot more um, variation in the, the depth of the facade. It's very, very flat right now, I'd say, all around, but specifically at the corner. So I'd ask you to, to relook at the, the materials as well. Um, th those are my, my two biggest 
I'm, I'm sure that my colleagues will cover other items, but those are the two biggest items I wanted to cover. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, David, I'll go to you next. Uh, I'll also echo my appreciation for uh, the work that's been done and the responsiveness to our previous comments um, and uh, the thoroughness of the presentation. Um, I'm in agreement with uh, Rachel's comments uh, regarding the, the commercial space. Um, I, I very much appreciate that you, that you doubled um, what was uh, proposed initially. Uh, and I, I, I hear you on the economic challenge of doing more. But as Rachel said, I don't think that this is really in the spirit of, of what we're trying to accomplish, particularly given the size of, of this building and the number of residential units in it. Uh, so I, I urge you um, to try to find a way um, to, uh, to do significantly more on the first floor with commercial space. Um, I uh, won't have too many question, uh, comments about the design. That's, that's not really my focus, um, except to say uh, I, I don't find it very appealing. Um, I see what Rachel is saying about um, that corner being very flat. Um, I don't feel that the that the uh, commercial frontage is very inviting at all. And whether that's more windows or or other design elements, I don't know. But uh, but it it doesn't look like a commercial uh, retail structure. Um, and and I think you can do better there. Um, I do really appreciate uh, what you did with uh, with the bike parking to meet our requirements. Um, so I don't really have any further comments on that, uh, except to say that as we proceed, we'd like to see more detail on uh, what kind of uh, bike racks uh, will be used and how they'll be laid out within the space. Um, so I, I, what I, what I think I was hearing in the presentation is that from your perspective, you, you have pushed as far as you feel like you can economically on the commercial space, um, as well as open space setbacks and the upper story step back issues. And on those last three, uh, that's where you're you're seeking relief from from the requirements of the zoning bylaw, and um, I again appreciate the challenges of of this site, um, and that's even without the additional challenge and expense of the environmental contamination. Uh, but uh, is is that is that really is that what you're saying that it that you pushed as hard as you can and if you, you can't get relief on those items then this project is is a no go. Bob, I can I can jump in here um, on, on a couple things. In a, in short, yes, that is correct. And to the point where we have submitted to lenders other variations of this with all and what the numbers would look like with the whole entire first floor as commercial and retail. And it's just a no go because you're trying to spread out almost a million dollars and make the bank feel comfortable that they're going to get their, you know, get paid their principal and interest. And I think on the commercial, that entire block we have reserved for commercial retail, we are not married to how that gets split up. So say someone comes in and wants all 1300 and they want windows and glass the entire length of it with outdoor seating and say it's like a starbucks for example just to use one off the top of my head we would be fine with that just a lot of that gets figured out you know in the negotiation process with the leasing in terms of how much someone wants or if we get two and the spaces get split right down the middle or what you know whatever it may be but we just know that 
economically, we can block that off. And even, you know, if we don't get any tenants for four years, we at least can do the rest of the, the project. Is there anything that needs to be done or, or, or hasn't already been done that would enable the flexibility of that space to be used for food service, for instance? Uh, was, can you give me a little Well, I mean, particularly from a mechanical perspective, is, is there any additional uh, engineering in, in constructing the building uh, that would be necessary in order to make it possible to run a food service operation out of that space? Aaron, I might direct that question to you if you're still there, because it would depend on exactly what they do and how. Yeah, I mean, the only difference, um, if you were to put a restaurant in there, you'd need to put a grease trap um, prior to the sewer running out to Mass Ave. So that's something, um, I mean, that's typical. That's something we could hash out down the line um, if, that was, if that was the route you were to go. You so there's nothing a black iron running to the roof for your exhaust. So this is Adam Wagner again, um, and Rachel's absolutely correct. So it's grease trap and it's hood exhaust. The, the hood exhaust, most likely you'd want running all the way up to the roof level, which means you've got a pretty sizable piece of duct that's going to run through uh, the walls and the layout of the residential units. Um, it, it could certainly be done. It's just something that hasn't been baked into this design at this point. But if it, if it isn't done at some point, then, uh, then a restaurant use would essentially be precluded. Technically, yes, but you could still have any type of um, service industry where at certain levels not cooked on site. So you could have anything from, you know, depending on a sandwich shop or salad bars or depending on exactly how they operated, you could still have that type of either restaurant in there. I see. Hey, hey David, can I interrupt one quick second here? Sure. Uh, I see where you're going and it's kind of interesting. Uh, is there a way maybe uh, that we can grant relief somewhere else? so that they, they can get a larger um, commercial space by like maybe a decrease in number of parking spaces and sliding the, the back of the uh, housing back, for, uh, back a little bit more by deleting some of the parking and then having a larger re a retail space down below. Uh, do we have that? Is, or uh, maybe Bob, that may be a question for you. Actually, I think I'll have Jenny answer that. Okay. I've got a question for one of my experts. <laughs> is it something we can consider, gentlemen? That's what Ken is asking. Okay. I mean, the only thing too is having the ones almost the, I mean, if, if we still had one parking space per unit for marketability of these units, that's important to us. Um, I know we have a couple of extra right now. So I guess the, the difficult thing is reworking all the architectural layout design internally. So where do those extra units come from and how many do you actually gain? Is it just one, you know, or is it two? I don't, I just realistically, I don't see it adding any more than one when it actually comes down to it at the end of the day. Well, what if we just turn uh, the, the parallel park, the parking into parallel spaces along one side. So it would be, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe there'll be like eight parking spaces there and, and instead of, um, what do you got there? 12, 13? We could, if we went up a whole nother story, we could do the whole first floor retail. Um, commercial. Is, that, is it within zoning? I'm not quite sure because I think the height restriction is 60. I can't quote it off the top of my head. Uh, Jenny, fifty feet. Jenny, something we can look into um, to help these guys out. Is that a way of something we can do? I I don't think that that would work. An extra, an additional story. Um, we can we can explore it, but I don't think that that would be 
something that would work on that site based upon what they've proposed, um, which I think is on, I, I was just trying to find this, the maximum height is right here. Um, and I don't think, I don't think that they would actually make it if you added one more full story. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to investigate it. I think there's probably other scenarios that would have to be explored. We have talked with them about reducing parking for other reasons. And uh, this applicant is reluctant to do that. So I think, I think that's probably the bigger issue that needs to be talked about. Not adding commercial space, they want to keep their parking. Um, so I, I think I'd put it back at the applicant to devise a plan to address these issues. I think you're right, Jenny. I think that uh, we need to provide parking for the residential units, as John Murphy has indicated as well. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem uh, renting those units uh, uh, as well. Uh, and I think, you know, John made a good point. I I've been in this town for many, many years. Uh, and the retail spaces, I know we're, we're talking now about the possibility of a restaurant. I'm looking at Rachel when Rachel's uh, image appears on the screen and when we're talking about uh, running uh, that stack up through the residential units, uh, I'm not seeing uh, too much enthusiasm there, okay? Uh, the, uh, with respect to the retail spaces on Mass Ave, we've all lived through this, okay? Where retail spaces, uh, I've represented the Poulos family. Charlie Poulos, who died at 93, owned half of Arlington Center, okay? Uh, always had vacant spaces down there, had difficulty renting them. Uh, his daughter for di a different reason, okay? But I, I think what John Murphy is saying is maybe the banks are seeing that as well, okay? From the point of view of do we want to lend money to a project where we don't think we're going to see a return on the amount of money we're putting into it. Uh, that's the problem, okay? And I'm certainly open to suggestions, okay? But I think they have to make sense from my client's point of view. Uh, and I know, you know, you're going to say, well, you know, your client has the obligation to work this thing out. But the client is the one who has to spend the money. The client is the one who has to come up with the financing, okay? And if the client cannot do that, then the client's not going to make this project happen. Uh, I think that uh, there have been some good proposals here in terms of uh, the what can be done as far as the exterior, the building is concerned, and the like. And we certainly can consider doing that, okay? But uh, as John Murphy has indicated, I think we, we hit a roadblock uh, with respect to, again, and I talked about it earlier, the setbacks, because we need the setbacks. Uh, if uh, we need that certainly seven and a half foot setback on the fourth floor, if we're going to have uh, make up an extra unit, uh, uh, strike that, if we're going to be able to make up for the two feet we have to move the building, two, two, two feet, one, uh, four inches back from uh, the lot line. So, I mean, we're open to suggestions, but uh, you know, I I'm, I'm pleading with you to listen to what we're saying, okay? And again, the Pascuto family is not the Myrak family. We don't have the deep pockets that they have, okay? So we're trying to do the best we can. Bob, I would seriously say that the message I really want to get across here is if this environmental issue did not exist, we wouldn't be having this conversation because we would just say yes to the retail on the first floor. It would not matter. It, re it really wouldn't but we are stuck in a corner here where we have an issue we have to deal with. And the only way to even get money to deal with that is to propose something to a lender that says, we're going to give you the money to do everything, but it has to make sense for us. And, you know, I think there's other projects. I don't think this is the last time you're going to see us. I think there's other projects probably eventually that it's going to be a little bit of a different conversation that we're going to be in front of the ARB and you're going to be happier with some of these issues that you're bringing up. I would say we can add the windows on the, the, the retail and the commercial on the first floor. That's not a problem. We can add those windows. We can say yes to that right now. But the getting rid of those back units is just, I don't want to sit, sit here and say we can look at that and make it work probably because that would just be a lie because we've already tried to make it work before we came in here. And I would rather not mislead anyone. I, 
I, I hear and appreciate everything you're saying. I understand the challenges here. What I'm struggling with is uh, whether this it really feels like an appropriate um, application of, of mixed use as it's defined in Arlington. And um, I'm, uh, it, you know, it's clear, uh, you, you definitely uh, done some good work here to push it further than was initially proposed, um, but it's, um, I'm struggling with it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. And uh, I mean, other, other things here, uh, you know, I don't know if you were on when we were doing the, the hearing on the previous project tonight, but, uh, you know, the, the seeking relief from the upper story step back, which we had a lengthy discussion about in, in that hearing. And, um, and there, there was a reason that we, uh, that we uh, implemented that by law uh, to require the upper story step backs. And now we're, we're getting now two projects in a row that are, are seeking relief from that. Uh, and, uh, and that concerns me. Um, and uh, I, with respect to the open space, uh, you know, open space is, is a big issue here in Arlington. And um, I'm, are we, I, I know that we can generally grant relief on these dimensional requirements, but can, can we actually grant a complete waiver of usable open space? Is that, is that within our purview? <laughs> Traditionally, it's always been a variance uh, issue, okay? Uh, I just wanna say this, okay? The, with respect to the ARB, jurisdiction was given to the ARB many years ago under environmental des uh, uh, design review to deal with properties fronting on Massachusetts Avenue, Broadway and the like, okay? The main thoroughfares through the town. So the intent was to give the ARB jurisdiction to deal with those properties, okay? Uh, traditionally, over the years, whenever one uh, needed relief with respect to open space, we were told you had to go to the zoning board. Why? Because that required a variance. Does it even make sense that if you're going to give the ARB the jurisdiction to, under environmental design review, to deal with properties on Mass Ave, the main thoroughfares through the town, that you're only give, going to give them partial jurisdiction to do that, and you're not going to give them total uh, jurisdiction to do that? Look, there is a statute that basically applies here, and that's 40A Chapter 9. And if you look at chapter 48, chapter, uh, 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 chapter nine, that basically has a preamble in it that talks about what can be done with uh, under uh, section nine. I should say section nine, not chapter nine. And that reads, special permits may be issued only for uses which are in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the ordinance or bylaw and shall be subject to general or specific provisions set forth therein, okay? And such permits, when issued, may impose conditions, safeguards, and limitations on time or use. I'm suggesting to the members of the ARB that there's authority there that has never been used, okay, by the ARB. Why? Because w when the ARB first began to exercise its jurisdiction, Many years ago, it basically said and concluded, uh, if it's open space or something akin to that, it has to be a variance. I'm suggesting to the members of the a a ARB that they need to look at section nine of chapter 40A and see whether in fact they have the ability under special permit authority to grant relief for open space. Again, because when the uh, ARV was established, the intent was that they would have the jurisdiction 
on these properties and not the Zoning Board of Appeal. I can't go before the Zoning Board of Appeal on anything on these main thoroughfares through the town. I have to go to the ARB. Does it make sense to make me do that twice? To go to the ARB and then go to the Zoning Board for a variance for something else? It does not to me. Well, I might ask if Jenny has anything to add on, on this, uh, or is this a, is there a question here? Do we need to no, ask town council? I, I think Bob is right. Something that I think I would like the ARB to look at, okay? Because traditionally, it's not been looked at. Uh, I, I think we can step back and look at that. I don't think we need to answer that right now. Uh, I, I think Bob is correct, but uh, we certainly want to look into it. I don't think we're going to make a decision or take a vote on this issue tonight based on what we've heard. I do want to move on. We do still have a long agenda in front of us, and we're getting bogged down here. Uh, it is an important question, but I think it's one that, that uh, is not going to be answered in this forum. Uh, we can go back and take a look at David, did you have anything else before I turn it over to Dean? I, I just want to make it clear. I, I would love to find a way to make this project work. Um, and, and I appreciate the work that's gone into this already. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just, it, it requires a, a substantial amount of relief on a number of things uh, that I'm struggling with. Um, but I'm, I'm not precluding, um, uh, finding a way to, to move forward on this. Uh, I, I just want to indicate a willingness to continue to work with the opponents on this. We'll take a look at that. Uh, Gene, go ahead. Um, please don't reiterate any, any issues that have already been raised. But no, I won't. I'll be as quick as I can. I just would say I agree with uh, my colleagues about the good quality of the presentation, what was presented, also how far the um, design went from the previous one to, to this one. Um, I am in a slightly different place than some of my colleagues on a few of these issues. I don't necessarily have a problem with the 1300 square feet on the building based upon what I've forgotten who just said that you're flexible about how they're used because it seemed when I looked at this initially that 500 was retail and 800 was commercial and there was a wall between it. If you're flexible, rent it all to somebody for retail, rent it all to somebody for commercial, split it up. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, I think it would be very nice if you found a way to put that chase in because you have two restaurants in there now. And it seems to me one possibility is to have maybe not one of those two restaurants while well, they're both gone. You did have two restaurants in there have one of the restaurants or another restaurant return. And by not providing that exhaust, you're losing the opportunity to fill that space. So I think it would be nice if you could find a way to um, do that. Otherwise, unlike David and Rachel, I do respect what they say and understand it. I think this is a minimum amount I would find um, acceptable. Um, you're at uh, 42 points in lead, which is only certified. I know you can get to at least 50 for silver certification, and I think you should try to do that. I think you should have at least one electric charging station for cars in the uh, parking lot in back, and I didn't see any indication of, of that. So now let me get back to the setback on Lachlan Avenue and then the step back on the fourth floor. We do have the authority to adjust um, the setback, in other words, the setback on Lachland, um, if there are specific conditions unique to the proposal. And it sort of seems to me the specific condition unique to this proposal is you are already in nonconformance with that along Lachland because you're nowhere close to 20 feet. So I'm comfortable with giving you um, 
less than 20 feet as long as you don't exceed the existing nonconformance on Lachland, which it looks like you're not going to do. So as long as you're not exceeding the existing nonconformance, I think you're okay from my perspective. Can't speak to my other, for my other colleagues. However, I believe, and I've read this numerous times, I believe we do not have the authority to waive or mitigate the fourth story step back. That is bringing that back seven and a half feet on the fourth story. David talked about the reasons why that was instituted by town meeting. And my understanding is town meeting had some discussion about giving us the authority to waive or limit that and it's not in the regulations. So I, I, I would hate to sink the project for this reason, but I really feel like my hands are tied by the bylaw on that. And with the other pieces, I am with you on all of the other pieces. Um, I agree with basically what Ken and Rachel said about some of the view of the building, but they're much more expert than I am about that. But I can't go with you on the fourth story step back. That's it. Thanks, Jean. All right, I'm gonna open this up to public comment. I would ask uh, that we move through this quickly and respectfully. I'm not gonna get into arguments with anyone, please. Uh, please state your name and address and uh, I will allow for three minutes. Each, please use the hand raise function through Zoom. I don't always see you. Uh, there are a lot of people in here. I don't necessarily see you if you have your camera on or you're just waving at me. Uh, so the best way to, to get called on is to use the actual Zoom chat function. Ben Rudick, go ahead. Hey, uh, ben Rudick, 40 Web Cowett Road, and also got my wife Sarah in the background. Um, first, I'll say that I'm very sad to see Torrey go. That was the only source of uh, high quality affordable sushi in the greater Boston area. So uh, if you could replace all 1,200, 1,300 square feet of retail with a giant Torrey, that would be awesome. Um, on a serious note, um, speaking for myself and on behalf of uh, Arlington Neighbors for More Neighbors, which is an advocacy group uh, pushing for more housing in greater um, in Arlington and all of Greater Boston. Um, it's wonderful to see uh, housing being proposed. I think this is, uh, of all the various ways and places we could build housing to build uh, smaller units right along Mass Ave, right near a bus stop, um, this is about as straightforward as housing production gets in this area. And so I'm really excited to see this get built. Um, I'm hoping that the board um, can resolve the issues around the uh, mixed use intention of the area. Um, Excited to see some discussion about giving other variances to allow that to happen without eating into the um, residential space. Um, yeah, and just to say that that we as Arlington historically have done a pretty poor job of producing more housing over the last 30, 40 years. And uh, if we're going to tackle the deep uh, housing crisis in our town and throughout the region, we need to produce a lot of it. We need a lot of affordable housing. We need mixed uh, affordable market rate. We need market rate. We need small units. We need big units. We need all sorts of things. Um, but, uh, you know, small units right on transit, um, right on Mass Ave, uh, this is about as straightforward as housing gets. And I, uh, hope, uh, from the bottom of my heart that, uh, that this gets done. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Christian Klein. Uh, thank you, Chair Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Christian Klein. I'm a resident at 54 Newport Street. Um, I had submitted a letter, um, in regards to the prior submittal. Um, I must say I'm very glad on a lot of the changes um, that the that the applicant has made. Um, I think the attention to the space around the bus shelter, specifically moving the building back, creating a little more of a buffer around that, and creating a better connection between the building and the sidewalk. Um, I think that's a much more successful um, than it was shown originally. Um, I also uh, appreciate the changes to the basement level and the layout of the long-term bicycle parking. I think the parking is a much more accessible in the format it's shown now and moving the short-term parking to the front of the building um, is also a, a very well appreciated. Um, I, I like the way it's cited. Um, I don't know about the fourth floor setback, but I do like that horizon line that's sort of cut around the building. I think that that does a very nice job of sort of making that delineation even without the building necessarily moving um, backwards in plane. Um, on the greener, on the landscaping in the front, um, I thought the renderings were very good. Uh, there's not a lot of very vertical greenery, and so I was just curious if you would consider um, any sort of climbing plants for the front of the building um, that could 
help to sort of soften that edge so everything is not just knee height um, as a possibility. Um, as in regards to the commercial spaces, uh, my concern is just they're very shallow. And there's, I think a lot of the reason that the building across the street had difficulty attracting tenants was the shallowness of the space. There's just nowhere to get out of being in front of the windows. Um, you know, if you have a store and you want to have a back of house, you need to be able to get away from the, the, from the front of the store. And there just isn't that option here. Um, and the two apartments that are on the parking lot, there's no buffer between the parking lot and the side of the building. Um, it's going to be very much like a motel with people driving in at night, you know, right up to the side of your bedroom wall. Um, and so I would, you know, encourage the applicant to think about, you know, could the project still be viable with two fewer residential spaces if that would allow those two commercial spaces to go full depth um, as a possibility. Um, and then um, since you, since I, I, I don't know the full extent of the excavation that's going to be required um, for the hazard mitigation. But if that, if the excavation is of such an extent, would it make sense to consider doing any sorts of ground source uh, heat pumps for the building where you're already doing the excavation to begin with? Um, it may not be a viable, you know, viable at all, but um, you know, as a possibility, if you're already digging up the site to a certain depth, does it make any sense? Um, that would certainly simplify your roof plan. Um, and then the last, the last thing I have is in regards to the usable open space. Um, in the bylaw for a residential use in a mixed use development in the B2 district, it's supposed to be 20% um, of the gross floor area of the residential portion of the building is usable open space. And currently the building has zero usable open space as proposed. Um, I understand the site currently has zero usable open space. However, the site is being raised for this development. Um, and so Mr. Mr. Chair, I ask, I ask you, does, does leveling the site necessarily allow the, the current owner to maintain any of the pre-existing non-conformities in relation to the building or the lot? Because it seems to me that the zoning bylaw is very clear that there's supposed to be 20% of the gross floor area as usable open space on this site for a mixed use building with residential. And uh, I would just encourage the, the board to. Um, that's something. That thank board. you, Christian. I, I let you go over a little bit. That's something I'll, I'll look into and keep in mind as we work with the, the proponent here. I appreciate um, your indulgence. Thank you. Carl Wagner. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Can you hear yep. okay? Uh, Carl Wagner, 30 Edge Hill Road, Arlington. Uh, I, I want to thank the board for the, uh, the useful questions and concerns that they raised to the applicant. Um, I just should say, as a person who lives in this town, not as a member of the board, that building just looks like it belongs in a city, not in a town. And uh, I'm amazed that you managed to make me like the building that Taraya and four other businesses that are being kicked out used to be in. That's such a dumpy little building. I can't believe I miss it now, but this building manages to make it look like that. In fact, this building's massive size, four floors basically straight up, even makes the terrible building across the street, 882 Mass Ave, look small and not so bad by comparison. So I hope that the board will consider that they should uphold the, the, the rules of the B2 business zone. B2 stands for something like neighborhood business zone. And it means that the businesses should conform and work with the neighborhood or how, whatever they were at the time. They were supporting the neighborhood. This building and the applicant's plan doesn't yet support the neighborhood. So in 2016, people like me in town meeting uh, voted for the mixed use building bylaw. And that allowed all sorts of open space to go away. It allowed uh, buildings to get much larger, less parking. It allowed all sorts of nasty things that belong in an urban environment. If we allow businesses to be supported by some accessory apartments or, or residential. And a lot of people were thinking of the capital district down in East Arlington. This building is not the capital district. This is not supporting business. This is misusing mixed use law to make accessory tiny business on 
on top of a ton of residential. And I think it means we have to relook at the mixed use law and perhaps get rid of it or substantially change it. I, I thank the board again for holding this building to the letter of the already ridiculously large rules that are allowed for in the mixed use law until we can change that mixed use law and certainly consider maybe three floors. That would get rid of all the problems of the parking and the ridiculous size. Um, that's it, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Don Seltzer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, is it possible to have uh, the last of my slides put up? I want to- Go ahead, Danny, let's, let's move through this quickly. I don't wanna argue about it with you. Next time, please get it in by Friday. Go ahead, Jenny. Go ahead, Don. Okay. Two and a half, Thank 243. You. I'd like to call your attention to the parking situation. Um, I don't see the slide. Um, the parking lot as it's presented there is, is greatly undersized. It does not meet the bylaw requirements for dimensions. Uh, one thing that's lacking is you re it requires a five foot landscape buffer between the parking lot and the building. You can't just have the cars come right up to the building as was shown. Uh, you also are required to have 24 feet in the middle for a drive aisle. Uh, the dimensions as we're shown here, um, no, that's not, what's the last one, yeah, the last one, thank you. Um, it's seven feet short of what the bylaws require. Uh, the only way to really deal with that is reduce the amount of parking. Um, what would fit into this area is a three-story apartment building where the first floor was all commercial and you had 12 apartments in the two floors above. You'd have enough room for the parking. You'd have enough room for the usable open space. Um, that is what the mixed law, mixed use bylaw was intending, that type of usage. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Aram Holman. Uh, test, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Aram Holman, 12 Whittemore. I'll try to be respectful of your time uh, and to get through things quickly. Uh, I want to address a couple of things. Uh, one is what I consider inappropriate use of the mixed uh, business district. I think other people have said words to the effect that you're supposed to have a mix of business and residential. It was not intended to do a wholesale conversion of business areas into res all residential or almost all residential, leaving only a token amount of business. That's not the way it was intended. What paved the way metaphorically for it was your removal of the 2,500 square foot per lot, 2,500 square foot uh, of space per unit. Uh, that is typical of residential Arlington. If for something that's 90% residential, you don't have that, you're really just cramming people in. This is not a good mix. Uh, one minor point before I forget it, a jump. On your plans, if you look at the plans for the upper floors, if you look at the center apartment fronting Mass Ave, there is no stove. So I'd like to see your plans include a stove. Minor comment, a digression. Uh, with regard to this building, I agree with all the people who say you really ought to expand the business use to include the entire first floor. That's what was envisioned. Right now, you've only got 1,300 square feet, and however you split it, that's not enough, and you're shoehorning in three other units. Part of the problem with Arlington businesses and why we have so much space is because too many of the units are holes in the wall. They're not big enough. And you're proposing two more units that are also not big enough and also have a high likelihood of failing. You need larger spaces and I will cite as examples of successful businesses that have lasted. Punjab and Acetron, both restaurants which took the enormous risk of combining two spaces. Tango 
did the same thing. Unfortunately, it just closed due to the pandemic, but the business model is there. I'm citing evidence to say you need larger spaces, and I would like to see the board require the applicant to create more business space and larger sizes. Uh, finally, uh, somebody referred to it, the, uh, your question of what you, uh, whether you can waive jurisdiction. I'm seeing a lot of hearings where applicants are really pushing the limits. Just because the ARB has jurisdiction to waive certain requirements does not mean that it has to do so. I think it needs to send a message to applicants who are complaining of financial difficulty or financial hardship that that is their issue. They need to make it work with their banks, with their financiers. Uh, rather than pushing and continually pushing at the edges of Arlington zoning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Holman. Barbara Thornton. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I, I am sitting here at getting a tremendous sense of deja vu. Um, we are quibbling about a lot of details of, of the, this project and the project before, and I understand that, that you have to hear all the quibbling and weigh it out and, and be good arbitrators uh, for the community. But I'm remembering uh, way back uh, in the, when the seaport was first being developed, when uh, Dick Carpenter had uh, the rights to develop the property and it was going to go forward and Anthony Athenas who ran uh, Anthony's Pier 4 was part of the deal and Anthony got greedy. And he said, he started quibbling and he said, I, we want a little bit more. I want a little bit more. Blew up the project and it was 25 years before the city of Boston had an opportunity to develop that area again. And I don't want to see that happening to Arlington because I, I live in the area that we're talking about right now. I drive by that property two or three times a day. I really would like to see something developed Personally, four stories sounds a little low. I'd like to see five or six, but we won't go there. Please, let's just make it happen. And, and remember the context that we're in. We're in the context where the economy is about to dive and we're not gonna have developers coming to us for much longer. So let's, let's, let's make good use of them while we've got them. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Steve Revelak. Hello, Steve Revelak, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Uh, I, I'm really glad to see a proposal coming before the board that adds housing, particularly uh, some small apartments, uh, that adds them on a major thoroughfare uh, right next to a public transit stop. I'm also glad to see something that actually triggers our inclusionary zoning bylaw and will add to our subsidized housing inventory. I do have one question, if I may ask it through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, earlier, Mr. Anise uh, discussed the environmental conditions on the site, and I get the sense that the property owner is going to be on the hook for remediating them regardless. So what I'm kind of curious about is if this project were not to go forward for any reason, for any reason, what would the likely alternatives be? Thank you. Bob, I can jump in here and answer the question Dr. directly. Trump, if you you. Respond to that. Yeah. So, and this is very quick, but the way that anyone who's not familiar with these environmental issues is when it gets flagged, you cannot ignore it. You are forced to deal with it or you face fines and other issues. So you can't just push it off. If we don't get a project that works, you're forced to deal with them. So the reason why we're here is because we are going to be required to take the building down and remove that material. And we have looked at all their types of asset classes from that we could build here that would try and make some financial sense. And this is the only thing that even squeaks through the finish line to be able to do something here. Otherwise, we essentially would have to wait until something else happens that we can de redevelop the site even you know whenever that may be so a hole in the ground essentially well yeah you you face fines and other okay. other issues like that so yes thank you. thank you steve thank you john any other members of the public wish to speak on this matter 
Pam Hallett, go ahead. Hi, it's Pam. Um, I'm executive director of the Housing Corporation of Arlington. And I also live at One Gilboa Road. I'm also a town meeting member. I just want to bring up a couple of points. Um, first, to refute the fact that these are such tiny units. Um, in our wait list, which is about 400 households at this point, our major demand is for one and two bedroom units. So the one bedrooms make all the sense in the world, particularly right on Mass Ave in front of a, a bus stop. I mean, it's, it's perfect for people who are either young and just starting out and just want a small space or even for uh, couples or singles who are downsizing. So um, I think that's a really smart move there. Um, I also am wondering, I, no one said how tall the building was. If it's less than 60 feet tall, I think that's what they need. Um, why couldn't they do a fifth floor? The building next to it is certainly significantly higher than that. And uh, even if it's only a partial story that would give them a couple of additional units up on the upper level, they would have a magnificent view and could be uh, great spaces and could also have a frontage that if you allow that to be open space, that would be, that could satisfy that piece as well. I think this is a great deal. I think it's wonderful that they're adding um, the affordable housing piece to it. We definitely need that, as you all know. And uh, I just, we are very supportive of this as a proposal and we hope it moves forward. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at the public comment? Uh, we'll continue to accept that via email post those with the agenda as part of the record. Um, Bob, I'm going to go to you. I know there are a number of Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Someone's I think waving their hand. Justin is waving her, her hand. Go ahead, Joanne. I didn't see your hand. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry I didn't use the, um, the other device. Um, I just want to remind people that at last spring's town meeting, the chair of the finance committee said the greatest problem in Arlington is the very low ratio of commercial property to residential. And Joanne, we, can you give us your name and address, please, just for oh, the record? And I know, we, we know who you uh, are, but we need it for the record. Uh, Joanne Preston, uh, 42 Mystic Lake Drive, town meeting member, Precinct 9, member of the board of the Arlington Housing Authority. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, at last spring at town meeting, the chair of the finance committee got up and said the greatest problem in Arlington from his perspective, especially in terms of the tax rate, which has been going up so high that people have to leave their homes, was that the very low ratio of commercial property to residential. And I think the problem with this Building mixed use was supposed to be mixed use, some, re some residential and some commercial. And it just doesn't do that. And I think um, that a lot of people are in need of housing because they can't afford the taxes. So I think that that has to be a very important consideration. Um, I've even known people to move in to the Arlington Housing Authority because they uh, could no longer pay the taxes on their small condominiums and they went through all their savings. So uh, I think this should be part of the picture in. And I, I really do not support having such a very small um, commercial space that as people have said is very hard to rent out that we need the whole first floor if it's going to be a truly mixed use building. Thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Okay, uh, unless there's anyone else that wants to speak, I'm gonna to turn to Bob and Essie. Um, Bob, you've heard some of the concerns here. How long uh, would you need to take this back to with your team and uh, address those either uh, in the affirmative or in the negative? 
The meeting that you continued for the hotel was continued to what date? August 17th. John, what do you think? Well, I think Jenny mentioned there's a meeting at the end of July, another meeting in July. Um, that's easily. That's July 20th. That's July 20th. That's only yep. two weeks away. That's fine for the things that we time? need to address. Is that enough time, John? Yes. All right. Got to rely on my team. Okay. All right. Oh, well, you can do. All right. So unless there's anything else from the board, I think we're move to or take a motion to continue this hearing to July 20th, 2020 at 7 p.m. So motion me. Second. Second. Motion by Ken, second by Rachel. Uh, I'll do a roll call vote. Gene? Yes. Ken? Aye. Rachel? Yes. David? Yes. I vote yes. All right, so this hearing is continued to July 20th. Thank you all for your patience, your input, uh, and your responsiveness. Bob, if there's anything you need from the department, uh, or if you think it would be wise to meet with Ken again, and uh, possibly Rachel, please feel free to do so. I think uh, that is a, a wise and productive way of going about things, and I think uh, we saw the results of it tonight. Didn't get all the way there, but uh, we saw some good results. So. Thank you very much for your well, time. Yep. All Thank right. You. Thank you all. Yep. That concludes the public uh, hearing portion of our meeting this evening. It's 1020. Uh, this is as late as we've gone in a while. Just has to happen. Uh, next up on our agenda is the Thorndike Place Comprehensive Permit. I'm going to turn this over to Jenny in a minute. Uh, we are going to go on through this. This is not a public comment, public hearing portion for tonight. This is not anything necessarily for us to vote on. Uh, but I'll turn it over to Jenny to give us the rundown of what's happening with this project. This is a 40B project, which does not lie within the purview of the ARB, uh, although we are certainly asked to have, make comments and opine on things from time to time. Those are not binding and uh, not we'll hold us to anything. So go ahead, Jenny. Thanks, Andrew. Um, I I think most of you were not on the board in 2016 and so may not have participated in the process that we went through last time. So um, for th those purposes, I'll just explain what we're looking for, which is um, the, the comprehensive permit is reviewed and approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, my charge is to collect comment letters from various boards and commissions, including the Redevelopment Board and different departments um, who are reviewing the proposal because it is going back to resume the hearing on July 14th. The deadline that we've set internally for getting comments is actually July 7th. So timing wise, um, I, I'm looking to actually update the comment letter that we sent back in 2016 and send it on to the Zoning Board of Appeals so that they have it in time for their hearing essentially next week. Um, so I am glad to answer questions about uh, the, the permit process, but it is a 40B. It does reside with the, with the ZBA. It's not coming to the redevelopment board for any sort of review or approval. Um, this is really just simply to weigh in, provide any feedback. Um, you can kind of get a sense of the type of feedback that was provided in 2016 based upon the letter that I provided in the packet. I would be glad to um, take any sort of updated um, information from board members. Of course, many of you weren't participating in that letter, so you might have very different perspectives. Um, the ZBA is actually, um, they've, uh, the town rather, has retained a consultant to do additional reviews through the beta group. Um, those reviews include stormwater, um, wetlands delineation, floodplain delineation, design review, um, and then also traffic and engineering review. So it is a, a fairly um, comprehensive uh, third party re review that we're going to be conducting. Um, and uh, they will also be going to the Conservation Commission eventually uh, to pick up that hearing as well. Um, but I, I, I'm, I guess I'll just pause and see what questions people have about the project or if you want to talk about the letter or how you just sort of want to want to handle this conversation. I know that it is late and um, we have other agenda items. So I, I want to be respectful of that as well. 
Go ahead, Jean. I thought it was a really nice letter from a few years ago. I just had one thought about it. I think it's interesting that in our inclusionary bylaw, the 15% of units that a rental have to be for people at 70% of AMI, but for 40B, it's 80% of AMI. And I know we made some other um, recommendations in the letter about, you know, sort of income ladders for the place, but I wondered if it made sense to also put in that 15% of the units, you know, the first 15% of the 25% that are going to be affordable should be at 70% AMI, not 80% AMI. Because that's, you know, it doesn't, I think it might actually be sort of winnable on that issue. And it's not a lot of difference, but it, it sort of does respect that our bylaw does slightly better than 40B on where to set the income limit. That's it. Thanks, are you, can I just clarify something? Gene, are you asking to amend the, uh, so in the letter that we wrote in 2016, I think you're looking at sort of the section four when we talked about affordable housing. Do you wanna amend that to talk a little bit more specifically about 4A by giving a little bit more detail or are you suggesting that we encourage them to go lower? I think, we should, I think we should encourage them to go lower and, and specifically say, you know, in, in Arlington, it would be 70% AMI. And therefore, it makes sense to at least do that for 15% um, of the units. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. Any other board members? Mr. Chairman. I'll just, I'll just say from a, um, you know, we made a couple of recommendations for things that we wanted the ZBA to ask for from a design perspective. Um, it's very institutional looking currently. And again, I don't know what the design review process is with the consultant, um, but I think that there's a, a lot of opportunity still for Im improvement here. So. Um, I'm happy to provide some specific feedback or if, again, that's really being held by the consultant and we don't have a lot of um, opportunity to provide input, then I will hold on those comments. I think it would be helpful <clears throat> if you, based on what we wrote last time, if you think that there are certain things that we can amend, um, more specific guidance that you would like to provide, um, if it's okay with Andrew and others, I would suggest that you draft something and send it to me because I'm, I'm not, obviously, we're not approving a, an exact letter this evening. I'm going to have to write something anyway as a follow-up to this. Um, so I, if it's okay, Andrew, could we have um, board members individually submit any updated um, changes or suggestions that they would, for things they would like to add? Yep, I'm okay with that. So Rachel, if you want to think about suggestions for uh, making it a little less institutional or other areas for improvement, it would be helpful to get a sense of what those might be. And that's feedback that we can also provide to the third party consultant, but I think it's still useful to provide specific guidance. Sure, I can get that to you tomorrow morning because you, that's that's your when you need to send it this I'm going to start correct? turning it over yeah yep. tomorrow okay. got it thank you yep hey Jenny can I ask you a quick broader question on this okay um, they go a 40b because we don't have enough affordable housing in Arlington what is the criteria uh, what criteria we have to meet so they cannot so no other developer can do 40b in Arlington well, we're, we're, there's different ways to meet the 10% or 40B under Mass okay. General Law 40B. You either meet it through the 10%, which in our case, we're at about 5.2 or 3% right now, and it has to be 10%. We would need hundreds of units in order to achieve 10%. So we're um, not close. So that, that's, that's one way. The other way is through the general land area minimum, which is what we, um, we were looking to do through the 1.5% of the land area that's devoted to housing. And we 
that was part of the original um, denial by the Zoning Board of Appeals in 2016, which then was went to the state through an appeal, a whole process, which was then appealed the decision and then unfortunately delivered back to the town that we still have not met that 1.5%. So that's why the hearing is now resumed. So either we can meet the requirement through 10% or through the general land area minimum. Not, there's not another community in the Commonwealth that's achieved 1.5% yet, um, but it's, uh, if we did, it would be by adding to the affordable housing inventory and the land area of the, with the affordable housing on it. Um, this, the, so that's the reason why it's resuming and the hearing is happening and because we have not achieved, we have not met the state law requiring 40B. Okay, thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. So I was pretty happy with uh, the transportation related section of, of this letter. Mm -hmm. um, I think the one other thing I might suggest is uh, it would be nice if they could comply with our new bike park in Bioha. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which we talked about would, bikes, but we didn't have which, a bike park in Bioha. Right. Which yeah. which would make a, a big difference in mm -hmm. such a large development. Yeah, and so close to Alewife. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I can um, I can I can uh, probably add a, a new subsection. I think that makes sense. Okay. That's, that's fine with me. Okay. Okay, I, I think I have all I need um, at this point in time. So I will draft something, I'll send it to you, all of you for as a, um, a notice that I, it'll be submitted um, to Christian Klein from, uh, who's the chair of the ZBA. And uh, I'm happy to report back at any point in time if you have questions about the hearing or anything of that nature or would like other updates. But um, I really just wanted to bring this back to you to get an updated um, letter back to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. All right, moving on. Um, unless there's any objection, I am going to pass on the Woodmore Park update until our next meeting, July 20th. All right, Jenny. Yes, yes. I, uh, I have. Uh, Ali Carter was participating. I think at this point we have decided we're going to move that to July twentieth. Um, we, uh, the landscape architect, will join us at that time. Good. Um, I'm also going to continue the director's update and the meeting minutes. Um, <clears throat> I'm bouncing around a little bit here. I apologize. But uh, we do have to do the appointment for the Housing Plan Implementation Committee. So Jenny, lead us through uh, the woman who has applied. She was with us earlier, but I don't think she is anymore. I don't blame her, but Jenny, go ahead. I don't know if she's not on anymore. Let me see. Uh, one second. I, I guess she did drop off. I thought she was still on. Well, we have, okay. She's not there anymore. So, um, the applicant's resume is in the package. I'm uh, glad to give an update about her if needed, but uh, I was hoping to introduce her to you. Um, we can also have her come back next time if that makes you feel more comfortable, but we have we have a number of openings on the Housing Plan Implementation Committee, and I think um, we only had that one applicant at the time. So we've interviewed her and we think she would be a good fit on the committee. We also recently lost another person on that committee um, who resigned, who had been with the committee actually since it was the Housing Plan Advisory Committee. So she actually helped us to create the Housing Production Plan and unfortunately she um, has now left. So you, I would like to think? really get another person appointed as soon as possible so that we can have a fuller committee. Are they meeting regularly during COVID? They have had two meetings. We didn't have a meeting last week, but we um, intend to have another meeting in August. Okay. 
Um, I suppose we could have her come back July 20th. I'd hate to waste her time again when she's the only person who's applied. She has an impressive resume. Um, and anyone who's willing to serve on that committee, I guess, uh, should be thanked for their volunteer. Uh, she's not one of the normal faces we see around town. She's someone new. And <clears throat> I appreciate uh, new input and new ideas on things. So um, I guess I'll defer to the rest of the board with whether you would like to appoint her this evening or have her come back July 20th. <clears throat> okay. I'm okay uh, ruling on the papers, so to speak. That's, that's where I am. I would, I would agree. I think that uh, her resume is, is excellent and um, she certainly has had a series of experiences that I think will serve her well on the committee. Good. So either, would either one of you like to move to appoint her? And her name escapes me at the moment. Michelle. Michelle. Michelle Shortsleeve. Michelle Shortsleeve, yeah. All right, so someone please move. I'll move. To right. appoint Michelle short, short sleeve to the Housing Plan Implementation Committee, we have Rachel's motion. We have a second from me, David, uh, Jean. Yes. In. Aye. Rachel. Yes. David. Yes. I vote yes. Congratulations, Michelle. I look forward to hearing from you soon. In in absentia. Okay. Um, thank you. So thanks, Jenny. So we're skipping. Uh, as I said, we're tabling the director's update. We will table meeting minutes, uh, tackle those at the next hearing, and move to open forum. <clears throat> um, please be brief. Please be respectful. I will call on you. I will be slightly looser with the three-minute rule as we've made it through the uh, two public hearings this evening. Uh, please use the raise hand feature so that I can see what you'd like to speak. And uh, Don, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Earlier in this meeting, uh, Attorney O'Connor disparaged the information that I've been providing to this board about shadows and has told you but that you should ignore me because I am not a licensed expert in the field. I've been very candid with this board about my background and the specific mathematical tools that I've been using. I have never disputed the shadow studies provided by our experts. I have refrained from pointing out to our experts that deciduous trees do not have leaves in late December, nor even by the spring equinox as shown in their expert analysis. Instead, I've tried to supplement these studies with useful information that these limited analyses do not convey. Rather than simply show what homes might be affected, I provide the board with the more useful metrics of exactly how many hours of sunlight will be lost to these homes and how many months of the year that these conditions will last. If the applicant disputes any of my numbers, I urge him to consult his experts to double check them. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Anyone else wish to speak during open forum? Seeing none, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So motioned. Second. Motion from Ken, second from Rachel. All right, done. See you all on July 20th. Thank you all for your patience. I vote yes on the motion. Uh, yeah, we have to vote. Gene. <laughs> yes. Ken. Yes. Rachel. Yes. David. Yes. Oh, yes. I jumped the gun. I'm <laughs> ah, all right. We appreciate it. All of you, and we'll talk on uh, July 20th. Thank I, you so much. There was, there was a, there was a, like, sorry, may I? There was like a, an announcement. Go ahead. No, by you. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, there is an announcement. And I've, I've already individually said this to the members of the board. I was going to sit on it uh, since it's so late tonight. Uh, but for family reasons, uh, during the pandemic, I have tendered my resignation from the board, uh, effective at the end of the summer. Uh, I've spoken with Jenny and Adam about this last week. It has been very rewarding and a pleasure to be on the board for the last several years. Uh, I did not come to this decision lightly, but uh, the way things have gone in the last several months, uh, my own personal circumstances require it. So uh, I will still be around to some degree, but uh, we'll miss all of you and, 
in these meetings. So, but uh, I will be here at least through August, uh, depending on when my uh, replacement is chosen. So you'll still have to live with me until then. But uh, thank you, Andrew. Thank you all, to all the members of the board, all the members I've served with in the past, to Jenny, especially, uh, to Carol Kowalski and to Adam Chapdelaine and to the members of the select board as well. It's been, uh, it's been a very good experience and I've enjoyed it and I will miss it. Thanks, Andrew. We'll all bring a drink to our last Zoom meeting and toast you at that time. Wish you the best of luck. Andrew. Thank you. Thanks. You'll be very missed. Thank you. All right. With that, we can end the night and readjourn. Thank you all. Thanks for your patience. Good night. Bye.